Let's start. Hello, everyone. Welcome back and Happy New Year. McCall here with the crew and players of the Cerberus Station, and we are ready to go for a number for the second season, episode six. And to, as a change of pace, we are going to start off with the Chief Engineer's log. Uh, so, Commander Keevan, please take it away. Chief Engineer's Log, Stardate 83112.9. In my short time on the station, and my shorter time as Chief Engineer, I have never seen so much activity around this station, and it's quite exciting. With the Graviton Catapult project going on, we've had so much support during its build that the station is seriously stuffed full of crew. The sheer mass of crew here on station has made for some ruckuses that have been reported by security and some minor inconvenience with some social interactions. <laughs> However, having this much brightness on station is a welcome change from what I've experienced here so far. Don't get me wrong, it's still good. It's just different. We've actually started getting the full manufacturing capabilities of the lower sections of the station running efficiently, and currently I have rotating shifts working continuously on the materials needed for the catapult as well as other projects. Reminder, I need to speak to Captain Crawford about potentially relocating some resources to areas of decks 123 to 128 for Project Gobstopper. Might be a long shot, however, it could be useful considering some of the recent threats. Very excited to note that the initial construction of Lieutenant Commander Demos's ship, the SS Apollo, have gone much better than expected. Some of the engineering needed to put that ship together has really made me consider taking some downtime when the next break comes around, hopefully. Demos and a small crew, myself included on a couple of occasions when I wasn't taking remote readings, have made several short hops from the station to the Janus moons and going out a few clicks through the nebula. The commander has brought up the idea of taking the Apollo through one of the already explored gates of the transwarp hub. If the events of the USX Excelsior back in the 2200s give me any thoughts for comparison, I would suggest that we hold off temporarily on any transwarp activity while with the Apollo, at least until we have less commotion on the station with the catapult. I'm a big supporter of the ship and its possible um, abilities in conflicts with races, races like the Jin Sewell. When we do take the ship out, though, one of the gates, when we take it out through one of the gates, I would suggest that we have a supporting slip, slip near with Lieutenant Kiel along as tactical backup. End log. All right. So, as it has been hinted, uh, Anyone keeping track of the time? There's been about a one-month time skip since last episode. Uh, it's been... F um, all the activity on the station is now related to the Graviton Catapult that's being built close by. This, the station being the likely one of the most logical place to house all the material and personnel needed for construction. Naturally, this has been a very busy time for the station. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Demos and your security folks have been on their toes, and the amount of wear and tear out to the station in general has kept Lieutenant Commander Keevan's team also fairly occupied. However, it is a, a good time because Lieutenant Commander Demos, your ship has finally been declared ship shape and ready for its proper commissioning. And we are going to cut down to the shuttle bay where that can happen. And who would who would like to attend the commissioning of the SS Apollo? I'll be oh, there. Keevan's definitely there. Oh yeah. Okay. I would say that both, uh, we'll say both Crawford and uh, Nia would be there. Crawford and Nia, Mr. Dolrum. Um, and anyone from yourself? Uh, Elh. I think uh, Commander Area will be in attendance, but she's not going to be at the front. She's going to be lingering in the back, probably working on a pad. Keeping an eye on things, as she does. Okay. Okay, uh, Demos, this is your ship. Feel free to give the um, commission speech, if you'd like. VSS Apollo is named after a Greek god. He 
drives the sun with his chariot. He pulls it behind him to brighten the sky and to give life to the people of the land to help them grow their crops. It is with my hope that with this vessel, whenever I am done with Starfleet, that I can then take it and go and try and find some remnants of my people. But for now, it's going to be fast, just like his chariot is. Midas, drop the bottle. And Midas floating around is just going to drop a little wine bottle uh, that was uh, latched to him through a little uh, disconnectable rope. It I'm lands. going to be evil and suggest that McCall spend two threat to make the bottle not smash. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Mike, McCall kind of wants to save the threat for later. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, I'm, the uh, bottle uh, drops from the sky with the grace of a falling bird, smashes it upon the bow of the ship, and coats it with a fine layer of champagne. Well, who wants to take the tour? I'll go. Oh, I'm definitely going. I gotta make sure we my crew's kept some of this thing actually clean instead of keeping it dirty. You know, I gotta say, they did a great job. I know we lost a deck in all of the uh, thickening of the hull, but it's more rugged now. We take a better beating, hopefully. <laughs> but she's gonna go fast. Alright. It's your ship there, um, Demos, so give us a quick rundown of what they see. Uh, so he's going to lead them to the underside of the ship as its landing legs are actually extended out to keep it raised. And uh, the docking uh, ports actually, uh, the dock cargo bay ports open up and lower down a lift that they, everyone can hop on. And he'll take them up to that. And the interior of the ship for the dock, the cargo bay area looks the same, standard Starfleet. But as he starts taking you around touring uh, the rest of the ship, you're noticing that it's a very sleek, white, clean walls, um, bright lights, of course, uh, and wood finish everywhere. Um, as he leads you up to the bridge, it's um, a bit of a different design. He's pulled through a couple of designs from different uh, ships he's liked, and he's kind of hodgepodge it to make you know his own unique look. And as he brings you in, he just points to the middle console like, that's navigation? sensors, we have no weapons, um, engineering, and then the random, just in case. I think one of them can play games. But the fun one is over here, and he's pointing to the, the view screen, and he walks through it. And it didn't materialize, it was just a holographic view screen. I don't have a picture for, for this yet, but it's a chair that slowly recedes out of the ground, turns around, and he sits down in it and rotates around, goes back uh, forward into his own little cockpit. And he presses a few buttons, and the wall that's in front of lights up, and you can see the um, shuttle bay in full detail. And it's almost a wraparound view. Hmm. But... Fancy. Yeah, the um, nav there can also substitute as con if someone doesn't want to use you know actual controls I got joystick throttle actually a gear shift for warp speed I thought that was funny you know. so also the chairs are reinforced just in case of inertial dampers fail you can take a bit of the g-force not much but enough to hopefully survive a quick deceleration oh and they have seat belts too so, well, safety first. And Kevin's engineering team made sure that there was no rocks in the consoles. Okay, I might have left one in one of them, but that's for you to find out. <laughs> he just looks at you for a second, his eyes just slowly narrowing. He's like, okay. Emos, come on. If you haven't figured out my, you know, my jokes by now, we got a lot of more working to do. And then he does one of those exaggerated grins. Oh, yes. Uh, it's going to take a while before she's going to be the fastest ship out there. we got to do a lot of fine-tuning on her. But the dual warp engines seem to be stable. I'm actually really excited about that. And the uh, the best 
piece so far, I think, is the QSD drive. That's going to be fun to kick on. I still think we need to hold off on that, but I or I really do want to slip near with us when we do test out the QSD. I mean, that's going to work out great, but we just need some back. That could be arranged. Oh, and the SS Apollo, since technically I'm the captain of this ship, no offense, Captain, Geekon is my first mate. Isn't that right? She. Uh, the android replica of the Dread Station AI uh, cocks your head slightly to the side. Yes, this is accurate. It is my. It is our hope that a purely artificial command staff will make up for any failings that the organics often throw into any equation. You do realize my consciousness is still based off of a human. Yes, and I, you are attempting to surpass yourself. Well, we did it because we could. <laughs> but anyways, welcome aboard. And he's uh, gonna just quickly uh, send a message up to Darval, permission to depart. Hmm. We're going to quickly cut to the bridge as our operation center, as actually Darval will shunt that to the station's new strategic operations officer, Lieutenant Dusk, which is ELH's new character. ELH, if you would like to describe Miss Dusk. Sure. So, uh, on the surface, uh, Dusk looks like a uh, average uh, human female, uh, but probably the first indicator that uh, she is not normal is the fact that uh, even though her hair is regulation length, um, it is not perhaps regulation color. Uh, more specifically, the longer you look at the tips of her hair, um, the more you start to wonder, like, are they smoldering? Are they changing color, luminosity, things of that nature? And the second indicator is the eyes. They are a almost animalistic yellow. And uh, since it's not a secret, um, she is a cameloid. So she is able to change shape. But uh, for the most part, she just kind of stays as she is. Uh, but uh, when uh, Demos calls up to operations, uh, Lieutenant Dusk answers and says, uh, Yes, I was wondering if uh, you were going to be heading out shortly. Uh, have you filed a flight plan? Yes, and he'll just press a button and send you the flight plan. It's just a quick circle around the station. Hmm. Uh, weren't you going to test QSD? <laughs> he was slowly looked to keep on and some... He can't really smile, but he'll just tilt his head in a smiling gesture. I'm just going to look back at Demos, and I'm just going to nod my head. I mean, it's your ship, man, basically. Yes. Very good. I'm having the USS Aurora, one of the Slipnears, fly in uh, formation with you. Please come back safely. I plan on it, and hopefully everyone else will too. Hmm. Oh, I do have a uh, special note here from the captain. Uh, would you like it now or later? Uh, is the captain with uh, on board the uh, Apollo? Right now it's just Dalrum, I believe. Ah. He's like, oh, yeah, sure. He says to look out for something that Keevan did. I don't know what that means, but that's the message. Very well, thank you. Very good. Operations out. Safe flying. All right. And with that, we'll cut to the chaotic exterior that is the Carceri Nebula, the Borg Transwarp Hub in the background, and the station out in its full glory with dramatic music playing. Uh, so who is currently piloting the SS Apollo? I guess, is that going to be you there, Demos? Uh, yes, and uh, Decon will be assisting with any navigational. Okay. So, just because I think it's appropriate, can you please make me a control plus con? And the ship can assist with 
uh, engines gone with a difficulty of one. Oh no! Oh, oh. <laughs> interesting. Okay. Well, uh, let me do the shift because if we get another momentum, I can just buy that off. Mm -hmm. And before another complication. Uh, no, nope. oh, thank this God. This is why we test the ship more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Can I do the galaxy quest where I just scrape the holy hell of the paint? <laughs> mm, uh, You're gonna yeah. scratch my paint. Uh, so the dis no, the a rock rolls out of the your console in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> There are so many of these here. So there is a ungodly lurch as the as you depart the main shuttle bay. Despite the fact that you've gone through this sh ship tip to tail and redone it entirely, the fact that it's a uh, a meter longer has thrown off was not compensated for in the navigational or uh, in the uh, maneuvering thrusters. And as such, the ship lurches hard as it bangs its uh, rear assembly on the um, back of the shuttle bay. Is this going to broadcast on speaker? Like, sorry, sorry, it's, we're good. I might just make note of that. We need to adjust um, well, a lot of things. Noted. Record it for posterity. All right, so USS Apollo signals its departure with a much smoother uh, departure. Uh, Mud is taking the control and has, after what he has just witnessed with the Apollo, or I just realized I'm, I've called this the Aplo. I'm going to have to change that. Um, with the Apollo's uh, departure, he has decided to... Um, record everything and send it to Dusk's panel on the in operations just in case okay Deacon keep an eye on the plaza intermix it's a little high right now we haven't even punched the engine yet acknowledged well let's burn around the station and he is going to Go to a good, like, one-third impulse around the station. Just zip around as fast as you can. Okay. Aside from a little uh, jitter made by the now slightly misaligned rear uh, section, the ship performs admirably. Compensating inertial dampeners and realign the structural fuel generators. And let's boost the engine on the port side a little bit. <laughs> hey, which one are we going through? So, uh, Dolrum is on the bridge. Is Kivan with us too? I believe it's Kivan up... Or I believe it is Kivan, Nia, uh, Dolrum, and you. And Decon. Okay. okay. Which transport pub again was it we're going through, Kivan? Um, I am believe it would be uh, gate 13 leads deep into the delta quadrant into borg ruined space pretty empty not a not a heck of a lot to run into should some should something go wrong demos i think we could decide it on gate 13 we got some borg technology out there but nothing we can't nothing that's an active at this point yeah okay sounds good we don't got weapons so let's hope you just worry about piloting. I'll worry about the ship and the shields. How about that? Sounds fair. Okay. And with that, they enter the transwarp hub, and uh, Dusk, you lose the video feed as they do so. Completely normal. Uh, question real quick. Yes. Um, with how far away they're going, uh, will the feed come back, or are they literally just incommunicado until they come back through the portal? Um, at, well, I should re I should retcon because it has been long enough that uh, carrier uh, that carrier uh, amplifiers have been installed through the at least most of the stable routes. So I apologize. This is one of the explored hubs you're going through. So you have full. Uh, feed to their ship. 
I apologize. No, just that's why I asked. Yep. Okay. So, USS Apollo, you are going through the Transwarp Hub. Uh, the journey will take about five minutes to get out the destined gate. Anything you guys care to do in the meantime? Outside of keeping a look on the intermix ratios on both engines as we're passing through, that's about what Keevan's just making sure that we keep everything stable. Okay. I'm just watching because there's no weapons. Uh, Neo's just going to be looking over some of the specs and getting used to the uh, ship's engineering system. It's going to be adjusting a free console to his liking. Uh, Demos is going to remember that he can do a connection to any uh, ship he's on. He's going to establish his neural interface to the ship. All right. Uh, your ship is reporting all systems normal. Excellent. Decon heads down to keep an eye on the uh, two warp cores. Okay. All right. You depart through the gate on the far side as you enter deep into the Delta Quadrant. Uh, this area of the Delta Quadrant was at one point uh, Borg space, or at least Borg-occupied space. They, they have not left a heck of a lot in their absence. A few s husks of planets, a lot of um, red dwarf stars that don't uh, have anything significant to offer the Federation or any sentient species at the moment. Perfect place for tests. As you guys as you and the um, uh, USS Aurora breach the gate, uh, Mud just sends a quick um, comm signal saying that everything looks okay on his end. Okay, Mud, do a perimeter sweep. Just make sure we are the only thing out here. We'll assist as well. All right. Okay, so if um, each ship... Uh, let's see, how do I want to roll this? Let's have Mud... Or someone roll mud for insight science. Uh, some whoever's doing science for the Apollo can roll insight science, and the Apollo can assist with sensor science. This is going to be a difficulty two. Hmm. Given you probably have a better science than I. Yeah, I'll I'll roll for insight science for Apollo. All right. Tell him, do you want to get the ship? I can get the Apollo ship, sure. And Crawford, did you want to get uh, Mud? Sure. I don't trust my rolls right now. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, What's the Apollo rolling? Uh, sensor science. That's what I thought. Yep. Which we're really good at. For now. Okay, that's one momentum already. Nice. And there's another two momentum. Uh, so both the Apollo and the Aurora's uh, long-range sensors are picking up. Uh, it's a, it's very faint just due to distance and t attenuation of signal, but it appears to be a uh, an all frequencies broadcast of some sort, uh, broadcast on all all known frequencies and in several languages. It appears to be what. Uh, it appears to be a welcome message, and I should note that when the USS Polar Stern scouted this gate uh, roughly uh, five uh, months ago, it saw no life signs or any habitation whatsoever. Oh. Demos, this is kind of weird. We're getting this weird signal. You picking up on it? Yeah, I'm getting that information right now through their ship. Let's relay that back to Cerberus. Mm -hmm. Dusk, you're kept into the loop on things, so you are you receive the notification that they of this uh, find. Um, what can I tell on my end? Anything new, or am I going to have to wait until someone more qualified comes and uh, handles it? Uh, you'll probably have to basically go on third part on what they're telling you at the moment uh, okay. so it's a large it's apparently a fairly powerful source but it is quite far away 
uh, several light years at the very least, and has the signal has degraded a decent amount. Uh, d it is coming in several different languages, so the US, so the translator is able to deal with it quite perfectly. Uh, no known languages that have been encountered through uh, Voyager's um, encounters in the Delta Quadrant. So new species, most likely. Okay. Uh, I think I would do the standard thing, and I would ping the captain to uh, make himself available on the uh, in the operations center at his earliest convenience. Okay. On my way. All right, Captain. Welcome to Ops. Sir, we uh, have a report here coming through the uh, USS Apollo or the SS Apollo. Apparently, they're picking up a uh, rather strong signal on the other side of this gate, and uh, I put it on the view screen for posterity. Have they figured out what it is yet? Uh, no, sir. We are currently trying on our end to determine what exactly uh, the language involved is, but everything the Universal Translator is saying is that it is a new language, so we're going to have to hear more of it uh, in order for the Universal Translator to catch up. I see. Well, uh, send... Well, actually, are we able to communicate with them right now, Lieutenant? Uh, we are. Would you like me to open a channel? Um, just send a... I'll just send a quick uh, text-only message to them. and I'll Very just... good, sir. Essentially just send out a quick text message saying... Uh, essentially just to prepare first contact protocol in case we encounter whoever's sending this signal. I immediately forward that message to Dolrum <laughs> with an attachment saying, I'm not meant for first contact. Understood. I'll go replicate a diplomatic uniform. <laughs> oh, the replicators aren't online right now. They're being installed on Tuesday. <clears throat> I just tap my com badge. Mud, could you do me a favor and replicate a diplomat diplomatic uniform on the slip near? Uh, Mud sends his regards and his condolences. <laughs> Thanks, Mud. All right, I will pr go get ready for first contact. Let's hope the Universal tra Translator can learn something before we have to figure out these people in person. Yeah, well, I will set a course. All right. Hey, Decon. Yes, Captain. Are you, are should I refer to you as Captain in these circumstances? Uh, if you want to. Very well, Captain. Uh, a quick question for you: Have you ever heard this language before? And I'm just going to play her the audio or the message. I am unable to parse the language itself. Most of it seems pretty standard to avians. Avian speak. The Dread had enslaved several avian species in, their, in its heyday. Okay. Well, looks like me and you both aren't meant for first contact. Just do whatever you're doing right now on the engineer, on the engineering section. Of course. You hear what sounds like a power drill as the uh, communications cut off. Oh. I... Okay. That's concerning. Saying, of course. <laughs> okay. With his neural interface, he's just going to check a video feed to see what she's doing. It appears that she is in the process of reassembling a console that had been um, not properly assembled in the first place. Okay. So she is doing as intended. Okay. So, as you guys get closer, it's not difficult to pick up the uh, ship as you get nearer. Uh, let's see. This one. Oh. <laughs> so the ship is uh, scale six. So fairly large, but compared to the Slipnir and the Apollo, but you guys have seen bigger. Uh, it is broadcasting um, 
uh, many frequencies and several different languages. Um, your translators, well, MUDS, because it's a f uh, standard federation one, uh, manages to uh, translate the message first. And and he uh, ah, and then he ties it into the Apollos almost instantaneously. Come one, come all, to to the greatest sights this universe has ever seen, all gathered in one place. The Karna Marvelous accepts all visitors. Nominal fee, very cheap. Come one, come all, see this, see the greatest things in this universe. Sometimes, maybe even other universes. You will, you will have to see to believe. And you said this was being, like, played on the bridge of the Apollo? Yes. Yes, it is. Nia sort of, like, raises an eyebrow as the message is played. Um, as does the room. As weird as this sounds, this actually sounds similar to something I've read about. Have you ever heard about the Chicago World's Fair, Commander? I don't think I've gotten that far back in Earth history. It's a rather interesting part of, of history, actually. A lot of uh, inventors would come to show off their inventions and many other things. They say things like uh, the first Ferris wheel, I believe, was exhibited there and maybe this is something similar he just kind of shrugs it sounds like a traveling zoo oh so like a circus yes um not sure how I know about those but <laughs> it could be interesting the uh, as you get nearer um, there, there's a couple things that are very weird about this ship. Uh, the first are, it doesn't appear to have standard warp engines. It has impulse drive, but no obvious uh, engines that would allow it to travel faster than, than the speed of light, which is weird considering that there are no known spacefaring races for several parsecs in any direction. Uh, the second is that part of the rear assembly Part of the rear of the ship is heavily damaged. It looks like it's been either taken fire or taken impacts from a heavy object of some sort. Still, the message repeats. Mud, can you official Federation channel? Um, could you repeat that, please, there, uh, oh, Dalrum? Sorry. Uh, Mud, can you patch a federation channel? Am I breaking up? Yeah, a little bit, but I think we got enough. Uh, Mud is able, or Mud patches the standard federation greeting through all known languages and uh, frequencies. It takes a little bit of time before the... Uh, broadcast continues, but a second one, or you are now being pinged on a private channel. Well, let's see what these people are all about. Okay. I open the channel. One second here. Like... The holographic view screen kicks back in then for you. This individual appears on the main screen um, without Uh, it appears to be a humanoid female of some, although that might be a little loose. Uh, it appears reptilian in origin, aside from the fairly long uh, human dreadlock hair, and a, for lack, for an, what an odd dysmorphia it is, a top hat. Uh, she grins a fairly wide and partially fangy grin, Welcome, welcome to the Karna Marvelous. We're weary travelers. You must have come very far. We have you are the first we have seen in this particular posting. We didn't travel too long, but are not from around here. You could, I guess, you could say, I'm Commander Dolorum. 
Welcome, welcome, Commander Dalrum. Tell me, are you are you and your friends interested in visiting the Carna Marvelous? I must admit that we are not at our best right now, but we are more than happy to show you the strangest sights this side of the galaxies. I do have to say we're very intrigued. We also saw that uh, damage. Do you need any assistance with that? Yes. Uh, well, he, uh, her face sort of scours a bit, and the top hat um, r uh, dips further down the forehead as you see her ponder for a split second before she raises her head back up and resumes the j uh, toothy grin. Why, yes. Do you ha If you're nearby, do you happen to have a repair dock? Our ship, the, the marvelous here is not in the best of sorts after taking a well, rogue moon strike a few weeks back. We're very good performers, you can see, but... And she grimaces. <laughs> Our theater maintenance crew is more for the stage production and not for, you know, starship repair. I understand. Um, I will have to check back in with my superiors about whether we can accommodate a ship such as yours uh, size-wise in a repair dock. However, we could mobilize some ships of our own to come and repair here, if that would uh, suffice. Why, that would also be quite love. Why, that would also be quite lovely. And we could we could pay you back by offering you a show. The sights inside are, are guaranteed to be unique. The games you could play, well, you have play, you've seen nothing like it. And there's also plenty of rewards for those who are lucky or skilled enough. I must say I'm intrigued. Give me just a moment to send a message back to my superior officer. Of course. She sort of laughs. It's not like we can go anywhere. One moment here. And I mute that channel and open a channel back to Cerberus. All right. Uh, Dusk and the captain, you guys are up. You guys get a recording. Or you guys get a message back from the Apollo and the Aurora. I uh, just immediately patch it through. And I say, uh, you're coming in then, ops. Go ahead. Hello, everybody. From the Dawn. We've met up with the Karna Marvelous. I'm I'm sorry. What what is a Karna Marvelous? Do a, a computer inquiry on traveling circuses, Earth, eighteen hundreds to nineteen hundreds. You'll get an idea of what it is. However, they've their ship has sustained pretty hefty damage they state that it's from a contact from a rogue moon um, I'm not sure if we can accommodate them back on Cerberus but could we possibly mobilize some ships to come out and assist uh, so, uh, the, moment. Uh, so the station can accommodate up to scale 7 uh, it's a scale 6 ship so it could fit in the docking bays Well, it's the only. Uh, <laughs> he'll kind of, because what the only other ranking officer on the bridge right now would be Dusk or Darval. Yeah, Dusk and Darval. They're both lieutenants. Darval, if queried, Darval just raises an eyebrow and shrugs. Oh, I guess the only risk we have is that we don't necessarily know these people or what they're here for, but um, let's send a couple of ships their way and then if they can't, we'll just, we'll bring them here if the repairs are extensive enough. Okay. Yeah, it looks like we're having a bit of Discord trouble. Is everyone here? Can you hear me? Yep, I can I... hear you, Dalrum. Alrighty, I'm back. Welcome back. I think everyone else is around. Um, 
Uh, we might have to change server regions. All right, uh, let's. I think I'm back. Yep, there oh, you yep, are, Yelich. Here, yeah. Okay. Kevon. Kevin. Okay. He might be stuck on connecting like I was. No oh, goody. All right. Um, uh, but let's... anyways, uh, you said I got the the uh, station can accommodate, and then nothing after that. Uh, station can accommodate up to scale seven, or yeah, up to scale seven in docking bays, and I believe the captain was going to send send out the lunette for a more thorough analysis. Was that accurate? Essentially, yeah. S send some ships to maybe start some preliminary repairs, but if the damage is too extensive that the ships can't repair it, then we'll bring it to the station. Okay. So, this is going to be possibly kind of important, because this might turn into an away mission rather than a station-centric game. Which NPCs do you want on the lunette? Or, I should say, which characters do you want on the lunette? Let's see. Um, I think in terms of security, we'll probably want a couple of people just in case things go wrong, which I don't think they will. Um, probably want Dura and Rainer in terms of security. Okay. Dura and Rainer. Um, we'll probably send Holmquist for engineering. Quist. Okay. Who do we have that's going to fly the ship? Um, uh, the only person we could really send what is probably Darval. Actually, Dusk is a con officer. Oh, yeah, I was going right. to say, Dusk could go. Yeah, sure, let's send Dusk. Okay. Dusk will pilot. As soon as I get the character sheets up and running. And and so we have... Let's see. And commanding officer could either be you, the, you captain, or commander Aria. Um, hmm. New species. Like the first captain, captain. This is true. Yeah, Crawford's gonna go. I'm, I'm too eager for this. <laughs> Profit and glory, profit and glory. Yeah. <laughs> and then for a science officer, we haven't seen them in a while, so you have an NPC, McCall. Let's let's bring er Ensign Errol with us. Errol. Ha! I don't think she's really been seen since the days of Sullivan Barnett. Cool. Okay. That sounds like such an epic time in our history. I know. It was great, wasn't it? It was. Uh, well. Back when everything on the station was going to hell. <laughs> uh, spoiler alert, it's still going hell. to hell. It's just a slower trip. Shh, shh, don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Okay, so while the lunette gets herself uh, pat figured out, uh, we can do some preliminary scans of the ship. So I believe that this will be a uh, Keevan. Um, let's run an insight engineering for you, please. And uh, the ship can as or the uh, SS Apollo can assist with sensors engineering. This is going to be a difficulty of two. Gotcha. Would we say we're troubleshooting for anything here? Um, yeah, just and general diagnostics. See what the heck's going on with the ship. All right, troubleshooting it is. So close to a crit. Ooh. Nice. Oh, I should have said the two degree success if I didn't say that before. So you get one more momentum. Got it. <clears throat> okay, so uh, the ship is, despite its overall size, there is not a lot of internal, um, or a lot of its internal space is vacuous. Um, most likely for large shows, uh, presentations. Um, the lower decks seem to be a crew quarters, and you're s detecting several non-human life signs. Now, the ship itself is, despite its um, pr more or less pristine exterior, a lot of the interior is 
being held together with the um, 25th century equivalent of spit and duct tape. Uh, so self-sealing stem bolts and um, I beams, really. Um, the they weren't lying. The part of the rear of their ship has been something has smashed off of it, or they've smashed off of something fairly massive. Uh, it, it has damaged several of the back decks and looks like it's knocked one of their impulse reactors offline. That's caused them to move even slower. Yer? Um, there appears to be an anomalous energy reading coming from deep within it that you're not able to determine. It appears... The closest thing you can link it to would be that of a Romulan Singularity Drive. But even the Romulan Singularity Drive was attached to warp cores and other power systems. This thing is not attached to anything like that. It seems to be completely isolated from their, stan their standard nuclear fusion uh, power systems. But needless to say, this, this thing eats, or this ship as a whole eats almost as much power as the station does, despite it being about one-fifth the size. I just look uh, over at Dolrum and I'm looking at him like this thing is in worse shape than this was when we started on it. Well, if that's the case, then it, there's only room for improvement, really. Yeah, but look at the scans on the inside. There's something on the in the middle of that that just maybe it's Maybe I'm getting old, but something just doesn't feel right about that energy signature. I mean, it could be something we don't know about yet. I mean, they did say uh, stuff from other universes. I, I don't know. I'm being cautious as well. Um, let's focus on repairing what we know is broken and Let's not dive too far deep into their technologies. As far as I can tell by this, uh, sc these scans, they're technically pre-warp. <laughs> Deepos yeah. is going to read the information as well. Um, and he's going to scan the life forms against anything brought back from Voyager. Okay. Um, in this case, it's going to be insight plus medicine. Uh, ship can assist with computer's medicine. Uh, this will be a difficulty of three. Anyone want to help me on this? Because <laughs> I got a medicine of one. Um, does Deacon have Don't any decents? Let's see what Deacon has. civilians are here the ship's doing computers medicine you yep, said that's right <clears throat> I mean oh. yeah she has a medicine of she has insight uh, no her insight medicine's 11 but she could try I mean, what, what does Nia have, have? Uh, Nia's not much better <laughs> uh, I believe Nia's insight medicine is also 11. No, well, my, I was wrong. It's a 10. Dorum's totally... shoot, shooting for 9, so he's not helping. Right. Kivan's actually got 12 for insight medicine. <laughs> we'll let Kivan do it. Yeah, I think you win, even if you don't have any focuses. Um, if you have, like, oh, research methods or um, pattern analysis or biology, something like that would work. As a focus. Well, I, Damn it, Jim, I'm an engineer, not a doctor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, this um, yeah. uh, will be a so, difficulty two, if I didn't say that earlier. You said okay. three earlier. Oh, did I? Oh, well, then I'll go with three. My bad. So is Kevin assisting me then? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, assist? Yeah. I gotta just re-roll re for one then. Oh, well, yeah. The Apollo got one. So they probably got one. That's a good thing. Uh, Demos, do you want uh, momentum or three? 
Uh, well, I do have neural interface, so since the ship is assisting, I believe I can re-roll. I thought that was re-rolling for the ship. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, here comes my official insight medicine. Okay. Um, support. Woo. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter because Demos. Yeah. The Slayer. Okay. Uh, your the Apollo's computer banks do, were not built with the entire Federation um, catalog in mind. And its data link back to the station over the distance is not reliable enough to give you any information. Okay. Uh, anything about the energy signature? Is it a possible threat to their away team if we send people over? Nope. Uh, it appears to be a low radiation. Uh, a low emi ah, it appears to be a low band radiation, sort of like just a sun. Like, not a powerful sun, just like, you know, if you get too close, you'll get a minor radiation burn, but no, nothing like that. Sounds like a brown dwarf. Well, Demos will put the ship into autopilot and hop over his seat and go visit everyone on the other part of the bridge. Okay. And it's about this time that the USS Lunette uh, signals that it, it has passed through, through the gate and will be there within minutes. So, I'm rather curious about going over there. I second your curiosity. I will third it. Hmm. All right, USS hey. Lunette has arrived on station. Hey, Decon, can you come up to the bridge, please? Of course. And she, due to the size of the ship, she is on station almost immediately. We're yes. going to take a little trip over to the ship. You're in charge of uh, keeping an eye on the ship, making sure autopilot's functioning. Of course. And if anything were to happen to threaten the safety of the vessel, uh, as long as we're able to get back on, or if we're not able to get back on, um, keep the vessel safe. Keep yourself safe. Of course. You just give her a thumbs up. Quick question. Under yes. what terms is it acceptable to kill all organics? Um, in the current state the galaxy is in right now, none, unless... It's a case-by-case -case thing. Ask me anytime you get an idea, and I'll say yes or no. How about that? Understood. Okay. Okay, so who wants to go over to the giant, creepy carnival spaceship? Which is not yeah. a phrase I expected myself saying a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure everybody on the Apollo. Yeah. Okay, so let me just organize tokens here. So we have Demos. Um, we have Dalrum. And we have Keevan. Uh, ELH, which character do you want to take over? Honestly, I think Dusk would remain on the ship, and not because she has a deep-seated fear of clowns, but, <laughs> uh, you know, someone has to keep the engines ready to go in case a uh, ship hits the fan. Okay. So. Any supporting character? Uh, no, I'm going to let the others have the, have the fun here. Sure. Okay. Um, uh, Captain Crawford. Um, I'll I'll take the captain. All right, We're taking all the command staff over. Fantastic. Okay. Dusk, you're now in command for the entire. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that that, that that kind of puts me in command now, which is I guess what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she's been plotting all along. I know, right? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Captain Crawford, you signal your intent to beam over, and you receive coordinates of the welcoming chamber. Or the welcoming foyer, I should say. Alright. And you are... I would say that welcoming chamber sounds creepy. <laughs> it got slightly confused with the torture chamber. Uh, or wish. Okay. And you'll beam over here. Okay. 
Uh, you are beamed over to an entry point near where the bridge would be. And you are met by this individual. The, the individual that was speaking to you previously. And you realize that uh, she's much shorter in person. Well, sort of. Uh, she's She comes up to about five foot nothing. However, the bottom half of her is completely uh, snake-like. And would you able to, would you uh, lay her down and measure her tip to tail? She'd be about nine feet long. Uh, standing next to her is a fairly tall, lanky creature, a uh, humanoid, uh, standing about seven feet tall, uh, with uh, large triple-jointed arms and triple-jointed legs, wearing pretty much nothing. Uh, she seems to be swinging around a cane with a large, um, sort of like a snow globe on top. And the thing that's most interesting about her is, um, no, she doesn't have any hair, more like a Triceratops-like uh, bony frill. And right in the middle of her forehead would be what would be a third eye, except there's no eye, it's just a vacuous space around the many of the stations are manned by these strange autonomous like creatures they're humanoid and they're wearing bright reds and blues they pay no heed uh, to your arrival instead these two approach the ringmaster uh, dragging a fairly long whip that's just sort of dangling from her wrist she comes up she bows at the waist and removes her top hat. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Carn and Marvelous. Normally, guests would be uh, welcomed through the uh, ah, well, through the guest entrances. However, you are most distinguished guests, as you can hopefully repair or see us on our way once again. I am. Ring Mistress Cass, and have been the captain of the Carna Marvelous for, and she counts on her fingers, almost comically so. You realize that she has six digits, act as she does so, per hand. Well, about fifteen of what my planet's years would have been. And this is our contortionist, and my first officer, Sevrafras. The Severfras doesn't say a word, he just bows. I'm going to step forward since I've already made contact um, and bow similar to what they did. Greetings. Uh, we spoke before. I'm Commander Dolorum, and this here, and I gesture to uh, the captain, is my commanding officer, Captain Crawford. And Crawford will kind of, you know, inch forward a bit and then uh, do his best to mimic the same bow that Dolrum did. Um, Cass laughs at the um, attempt. Oh, I should mention scene change, so you lose one momentum. <clears throat> well, we do our best to, to put on a show. Sadly, uh, we we were scheduled to rendezvous in a different sector of space. However, just as our, we began our translation, well... We got smacked out of nowhere by this rogue planet. Not entirely sure where it came from. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. Well, you couldn't have followed us. That would be silly, right? Severfras just smiles and shakes his head. Anyways, yeah, knocked us completely off course. We have no way to realign ourselves without a, without a full maintenance cycle. Usually we trade our, a show for free service at our port of call. But as you can see, and she does a grand gesture of indicating nothing around her. <laughs> well, we would have been struck, stuck here much longer if it wasn't for you. The, the void works in mysterious ways, doesn't it? Indeed it does. Hmm. Now, now, I am not a very good hostess. I sincerely apologize. It's so rare that I have people behind the scenes, so to speak. Uh, she claps three times, 
and two of these jesters depart from their regular duties. You two, fetch food and drink. They appear to be a fairly standard template species. Find something sweet and syrupy. I think they'll like that. The two jesters bow in unison and depart in long, lanky motions. Sort of like I... a ball, or not a ballerina, a gymnast taking the floor. Uh, Captain Cass, if I may, uh, what exactly are those uh, pointing to the things manning the stations? Ring mistress, or Cass is fine. Captain is so formal, and I try to maintain a fairly loose chain of command. You see, most of us not in a are not just um, you know crew on the ship. We're also performers, and it works best if performers have equal say in such matters. Of course, then but, I will just hmm. stick with cast. Then of course, that works perfectly fine, Captain. Well, to be completely honest, Captain Crawford, those were part of the ship long before I became ring mistress. They just do their job, and then they sh then they uh, scuttle off to recharge, and another wave come out when they need to go. They follow the orders of the ring mistress or ring master. And in all honesty, I haven't really questioned it. Interesting. Oh yes. Yes, as you can probably tell, Captain, I'm not the first ring mass ring mistress. As near as I can tell, there's been at least thirty. And has the Carna Marvelous always been doing this? Near as I can tell. Traveling to parts of the galaxy heck, parts of the universe, if you care to believe the tall tales of our predecessors. Haven't been able to get out of the galaxy as of late, but that's fine. There's so many interesting things to see. So many th interesting things to show. So many people to please, too. Mm. Yeah, that damn barrier. Mm. She uh, slithers right up to um, Demos. Interesting. You are an android, or a robot? Sure. Technically. Different. She's... Yes, different indeed. Unique, I bet. Or at least rare. Not from around here. Ah, that that's the most interesting stories to tell. If you're ever interested in, you know, giving up your current career, she flicks you a, da a small data chip the size of a business card. Do please call on us. We could become part of our crew. Have some fun together. You'd be happy. I'll give it some thought. Hmm. See that you do. And about this time, the jesters come back with golden trays filled with all sorts of small delicacies and um, some sort of thick, bubbly liquid that smells quite, quite sweet. Demos is going to take the bubbly liquid and drink it. Uh, your, um, so... Remind me again, how do you taste? Do you taste as in a human wood, or do you taste as in, like, data wood? Uh, a mix of both. Okay. It's... I would say more so like a human, just because it satisfies that uh, subconscious desire. Alright. Uh, so it tastes like, for lack of a better term, watered-down syrup. Uh, horrendously sweet... Um, but at the same time, quite filling and nourishing. Like, oh, if I could make a face, I would. Oh. You know. Not that bad, once the aftertaste goes away. I'm glad I don't have organic parts, because I think I'd be diabetic. <laughs> uh, it's at this point that I would like uh, each of you to roll me a presence plus medicine test. And I'm not going to specify the difficulty here. Oh okay. boy. That's a whopping eight. I'm hitting for ten. Would survival or composure count as a focus? Uh, composure would, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, none of his. Oh, no, okay. Fun. Leave it to the command crew to both go get double zero. <sighs> Lieutenant hey, Dust. Dust, you want to come over to the creepy clown thing and get taken over? <laughs> no, nah, I'm going to stay right here, boss. <laughs> <laughs> ah, very well. Huh. You guys are all fe all feel uh, quite satisfied, those of you who've drunk or eaten anything. There's small crepes, sort of finger food type sweet cookie things. Now, as Cass continues to talk as none of as if you guys are not otherwise being distracted. Now, if you could, if you'd like, which one of you might be the engineer? Or would you like a tour of this grand ship first? Demos almost raises a hand and then stops her like, nope, another lifetime. <laughs> I was I would just I'm thinking and I'm like I'm just like, let's get a tour of the ship first. Ah, let's excellent. Have a uh, tour. Oh, very well. I'm afraid that neither myself or Sever Frass are, well, much, um, what's the phrase, functionally inclined, I think is the proper term. However, if you were to take that set of stairs down there, you will get to meet our um, props master and beast tamer, uh, Amadrix. Amadrix will show you the most crucial parts of the station. Just please understand that because we're not actively running a show, most of the booths will be empty and most of the games won't be played. So please, just as a sign of courtesy, leave all the bounties and prizes where they are. If you're interested in you know, winning some prizes to take home, we'll be more than happy to open up a couple games for later. I don't think you have to worry about too much from us. Indeed. Indeed, indeed. <clears throat> okay. Uh, you guys wandered down the stairs leading away from the bridge into the guts of the ship. And I should have copied everyone over. That would have made life easier. I'm not that smart. So much of the uh, non-performance areas are actually fairly tight. Um, you can see that most of the... Oh, there goes half the players. Yay, Discord. I'm going to jump servers, see if that'll help. Let's go to US East. Okay, hopefully this will work better. Yeah, no, Discord there go. doesn't like us tonight. No, it I doesn't. Like... Maybe it has a fear of creepy clowns. Or <laughs> we ne neglected it for too long. Also possible. Um, I shall be sure to sing benedictions to the machine god. <laughs> Percussive maintenance is my forte. Mm. Uh, so, as I was saying, uh, as you guys depart down the flight of stairs leading from the bridge into the control sections of the ship, uh, you're met by a, uh, a five foot seven tall uh, species, uh, humanoid in appearance, similarly minimal body hair, sort of a triangular shaped head. Uh, what's most interesting about him is that he does not, he's not wearing a shirt, and uh, coming uh, attached to his chest is a four-limbed, sort of a large rodent lizard kind of thing. Uh, he pays it no heed whatsoever as he steps forward as he and he bows in a similar uh, affectation shown by Cass. Greetings. I am Amadrix. I am... Not only am I the beast master on this station, I am the props master... And also, by default, the person in charge of keeping the darn thing running. Please tell me you know how to make things work better. Kind of. Depends. But our chief engineer is here, and um, I'm here too. Cool. <clears throat> he... Follow me, I will give you the. I will give you a quick behind-the-scenes tour. Hey, quick question for you. Of course. Have you seen anyone else like me before? 
He pauses. Can't say that I have. I'm pretty sure I'd remember something like you. Yeah, worth a shot. <laughs> All right. Um, Captain Crawford and Commander Dolrum, as you guys begin wandering through the guts of um, the station, uh, or not of the station, of the marvelous spaceship, uh, each of you uh, br brings forth a bit of a bad memory at some point from Starfleet. Uh, perhaps, Captain Crawford, you're remembering of the uh, harsh dressing down that the Admiral has given you recently, at some point in your past. And Commander Dolrum, you, for lack of a... Uh, uh, you're beginning to remember sort of the hard emotional times you went through post-Borg. And both of you, for a brief moment, entertained the notion of just sticking behind, but you brush it away fairly quickly. Although, Captain Crawford, it's a little harder for you. Hmm. Anyways, Amadrix carries on. And our engine assemblies are over here. As you can see, the starboard... That's... Port star. The starboard assembly is right fouled up. Took that... Pl took that moon strike rather ra rather hard. Had to drop the ships for the translation, you understand. And, well, pff, wrong, wrong place, wrong time. This thing gets right cranky when it's time to translate. Amatrix, what do you mean by translate? He looks at you. Jump, of course. One part of space to the other. You mean a starburst? Mm, I don't know that term. All I know, uh, all I know is that when the when the folks up there, he points to the bridge, enters the coordinates for the next uh, port of call, the ship sort of uh, he opens his hands and closes them like a book, sort of does some folding of space, and then jumps through it. Takes a lot of power, but have to shut all the shows down to make it happen. Even the shields and the sensors, which is why it's quite risky. That planet came out of, or that moon came out of nowhere. Oh, I know that technology. Oh, I know of it. Hmm. Interesting. Perhaps you and I could, t perhaps you could share whatever knowledge of it you know. When I assumed it this position, I didn't have a heck of a lot to go on, really one of the three sister ships that launched for um, seeding um, each ship was designed with a different method of travel but the Aru jumped and unfortunately translated into an asteroid all lives lost mm -hmm. that technology was abandoned because of that you have my condolences don't know how the ship makes it point A to point B but just goes. Except when it doesn't. That's why I'm supposed to be here. He puts on a smile. But, gotta keep going. I'll fix this thing eventually. Do come, do come. And he escorts you through the corridor. Oh. Demos, Demos will look at Kivon and go like, well, they're not traveling through Geodesic Fulton either, because they'd be liquefied. Well, well that's good to know. They must be doing some kind of space folding of some sort. Yeah, from vague memory of the Aru, it was... So, we used what you would call a warp drive to power out the telescopes to get a real-time view of a location. Unfortunately, the location they were jumping to was a little further. Uh, they didn't account for some rogue asteroid and entered the system, they translated into it. That's why it was dropped. And these poor bastards have no clue what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> they could, maybe there's something on their ship that's actually scanning, or it's displacing. The displacement field before the actual the space would actually be beneficial. I think a lot of people don't think Imagine folding space in on itself in a bubble that pushes anything that could impact it away from point of egress. 
and then the ship's there, perfectly safe. Ooh. That would be quite the concept of engineering. We're going to have to see what we can find out while we're... Uh, Amadrix carries on as if not either paying any attention or not understanding a word you're saying. And here we... Now we're down to the engineering level. Uh, do watch your step by the cages. Some of these creatures can reach far further than they can pretend, especially around feeding time. And you are brought down into the large cargo holds where the holes, where the hulls have been forcibly removed and several uh, large force field, or in some cases actual physical cages have been erected. There are several creatures of all shapes, sizes, and um, descriptions down uh, here. I guess I mean, he was just going to look at me like, I guess beauty is in the eye of the beholder, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to. I saw him. I had to. I know, you had to. Yeah, totally. <clears throat> I really can't see that way. Uh, as you guys wander past, Amadrix takes a step, uh, or stop off at a couple of the cages um, and manually th throws something that looks like it might be food from a nearby slop bucket into the uh, various cages where the creatures begin to gobble it up happily. Uh, what are these things? Well... That one over there, we picked it up on the darks, on a completely dark rogue, rogue planet. If you can believe it, it has the ability to literally transport by shade. Where, wherever darkness goes, it goes. Can't travel in light. That's why we have its cage completely surrounded by luminescent fields. Tried force fields. <laughs> that didn't work. Well, that, that was a mess. That took for a while to clean up. That thing over there, we're not entirely sure. It's been a part of this zoo since this, since Marvelous, uh, since the Carn Marvelous was flying around. All we know is it does a great show j during um, when it's called upon. That thing there, the brain with tentacles, yeah, found that thing floating in a gla in a gas giant all by itself. Figured it must have eaten its mates or was somehow deposited there. You should feel lucky. Normally, we charge an arm and a leg for tours like of our of this area. We you typically bring out pro the choice specimens to show off in our uh, display zoos. Down here, well, you know, we do what we can, of course. There's a loud booming sound coming from a couple of cages over as a large um, bass roar vibrates the decks. Amadrix mimics the sound best he can and goes, Shut up, Matilda! You've been fed twice! And he just looks back at you, shakes his head, and carries on walking. Remind me not to meet run into Matilda. Ah, she's a fine... She's a fine girl. Bit clingy, though. Considering she's got ten appendages, she usually only clings once. Found that out with my last host. <clears throat>, laughs. And that's why I will usually go with a with something that keeps their bones on the inside of their skin from now on. And he laughs a little forced as he leads you through the... Okay... You guys are finally nearing the end of the... Or the rear end of the ship. And I could not find a really good picture for this. So we're going to have to go Theater of the Mind. Well, here's where the here's where the show stops and the guts start again. And he opens the door to a fairly dimly lit chamber that um, ex extends several... Uh, extends about 50 meters in front of you. And it's almost clear space 
to the upper and lower parts of the ship. Uh, several gantry ways uh, run crisscrossing, uh, each leading to several computers uh, along the way. In the center, um, what is odd in this room is that despite the uh, obvious number of illuminators, the lumen globes, fluorescent tubes, however they do their lighting, they're not casting as much light as you think they should. And the answer becomes fairly obvious, well, as obvious as possible, as connected to uh, a pair of dark uh, chain-like attachments leading to the top and bottom of the ship, there is a large black orb. And he points at it. Yeah. And he points at it, looks back at Keevan. Yeah, that's the thing that does the translation stuff. Not really sure how it works. Or what those chains do. All I know is that the la if these things come loose, well, that's the end of the Carna Marvelous, I can tell you that much. <laughs> what a way to go, though. No, seriously. I don't want to go that way. That is interesting to say the least yeah. as Keevan is just kind of staring at it and just wondering about the chains well you have an engineering tricorder I'm assuming you could take readings actually I will uh, uh, insight en will assist all right uh, insight engineering difficulty of two. Uh, if you have anything like particle physics, or power systems, or even alien technology, something like that would work here. Uh, Boy, I need to spread out. Force field? Oh, boy. Uh, no, force, field force No, not in this instance. All right. oh, Woo! Boy. Wow, zero. We're really rolling well tonight. Yeah. Um, let's see. We start each game with the determination, right? That is correct, yep. yes. I think I'll use my determination to re-roll. Okay. And doesn't he also get something with his tricorder? Since it's an engineer? Um, ooh, good question. I forget what the it, engineer... It, uh, lowers the difficulty of any, uh, engineering-related scanning. Uh -huh. So, difficulty one for Keevan. I really need to mark that down. Probably a good idea. But, okay. Oh, thank you. Oh. So, Keevan, you get one momentum. Back to... Okay, so, uh, what this is, it appears to be, um, whatever, it looks, at first glance, it looks like a black hole. But that's impossible because a black hole would literally suck everything in and you would even be able to see it. Um, but what uh, what it is instead is, while it has a characteristic of a black hole, it doesn't have the mass of one. Instead, it seems to be sh taking in ambient energy and shunting it through the chains in a uh, uh, compressed bursts of several of a, at least a gigawatt each uh, each pulse per s um, if you had to guess you'd say um, you uh, as you look through the or follow the chains with your engineering tricorder as best you can see um, this whole section of the ship is built very similar to a Faraday cage in that it is supposed is it traps or it captures and traps and then further distributes all the energy generated by this for lack of a better term singularity this seems so this this device seems to pull in energy and then redistribute it while keeping this area trapped interesting Amadrix just leans over the railing takes out a small coin flicks it counts to about 10 before it hears the metallic 
ping of it hitting the bottom of the ship. Yeah, shame we can't show this marvel. Ah, well. So, uh, he looks over. So, uh, Mr. Engineer, what do you think? I think I've got some work to do. Let's see if what we can do about getting your energy back to your broken in to the portion that was hit by this rogue moon that you hit. He nods uh, once again, continuing to smile. Of course. Um, he pulls out a uh, la he pulls out what Demos originally thinks is a sort of laser weapon. But it turns out to be more of a sort of like a lightsaber kind of thing. And he uses it to point in the general direction of the damage section. Uh, once there's more illumination up there, um, you are able to see that the Faraday cage is indeed um, broken and shattered into many pieces up there. And it's going to require a lot of welding and probably some refabrication in order to replace it properly. Uh, it's around this time that um, you, Keevan, you notice all the gantry ways. There are rickety looking things. Like, there's rust spots. Some are hanging by one of only one um, safety cable where the other two have rotted away. Yeah. It's This uh, section of the ship does not appear to be well used. Doesn't seem to be well maintained either. <laughs> that too. We almost need like an, something anti grav to keep us safely there. I don't know if I'd want to trust my anyone up on these gantry ways very long. These seem. Oh yeah, Demos, you got any ideas here? Well, it was back on the old Elysium. I'd have an engineering team down here pulling everything apart and fixing it on the fly and then disabling gravity so we can just float on up, but I don't trust that thing. If, yeah, I, I don't want to risk someone floating on past it. As you're, po as you're pointing to the big black globe? <laughs> yeah. The other concern is if power is lost, what about those uh, things behind us? I don't want their force fields dropping. Especially that one that moves in shade. I'd be very afraid of that thing getting out. Amadrix um, just I'd be afraid laughs. of any of these getting out. Amadrix laughs. They have... Those... Our cages have not had one single breach in them in the, la in the several years that I've been the Beastmaster. We have three oh, fusion yeah. generators powering this ship and that thing. So if one Jim. breaks, the other one immediately takes over. <sighs> Nothing to worry yeah, you, about. You just had to say that, didn't you? Oh, I'm now sorry. You jinxed you, yourself. I'm sorry. Are you? Do you think that I am unnecessarily raising dramatic tension by possibly foreshadowing something? <laughs> uh, yes. You. <laughs> he laughs and shrugs. Maybe I am. Maybe one day I. Maybe one day when I say it, it'll actually turn out to be true. He laughs again and heartily. This is not making me feel any better. Uh, yeah, you uh, two been quiet. Uh, Captain Crawford. Yeah. Uh, because you took that critical failure a while back, you find yourself laughing along with his joke. He that was damned funny, and you like this man. After he finishes laughing, he almost looks like somewhat concerned. It's like, I, I normally don't find those things funny, ever. Um. Yeah, you just gave me the spirit of first contact, all. I'm not sure that's the case, Lieutenant Commander. Uh, uh, 
we are going to have a quick cut to the USS Lunette, where Dusk, as the acting uh, commanding officer, we have uh, the Lunette bridge here. Crawford is not on board. <clears throat> uh, Lieutenant Dusk, there is uh, an unsanctioned transporter activity. Beaming. Be more specific if you can. Of course. Uh, there are two signals beaming from the USS Lunette to the uh, br- or to the main foyer area, so the bridge area of the uh, Marvelous vessel. Uh, you, is it uh, members of the Lunette crew? It is indeed. Um, Mr. Holmquest and Dura seem to be absent. Uh, I'm assuming it's... I didn't get notified in time to reverse the transport. Correct. You were notified after the fact. Most likely Mr. Holmquest had a thing to say about that. Um, as the transport um, signals end, your your, uh, your uh, command console chirps. There are two letters of resignation. One from um, Truman Dura and one from Ensign Holmquest. Raider is going to raise an eyebrow and like, what? Dura. I... The, the timing on this is way too suspect. Uh, this is Lieutenant Dusk to the away team. Away team, come in, please. This is the captain. Go ahead. Uh, are you uh, somewhere private right now, Captain? No, but I'm sure I can move somewhere where that can happen. Please do as soon as possible. I was trying to find like a dark corner or something of the sort. This is that is literally the easiest thing to find in this section of ship. Well, one that's further away from. We'll just say, what was that one? The Amatrix. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get you. Go ahead, Lieutenant. Sir, we just had two officers up here submit a resignation and beam over to the ship. Is uh, is everything all right over there? I mean, we had no indication that there was something amiss until this event happened, and now I'm starting to wonder if I should have brought along a medical officer instead. <laughs> <laughs> that seems a bit of meta of a comment there, but uh, Crawford will kind of there's a bit of silence, and he just replies, Is there any reason as to why they resigned in the notices? I look at the notices, and... Mm. Uh, not really. They're just general resignations. Actually, if I may. Uh, oh, the, the notices uh, show a haunting similarity. Uh, each of them say or highlight some part of their history that they're not happy with with Starfleet. Uh, Ensign Dura deeply regrets the incident with um, Master Chief Ember several months back, and claims that she is is not fitting in well with the new commander of the security office. And Ensign Ensign Holmquist is saying that he has felt neglected in the in his in his recent time on the station, and wishes to go somewhere where he believes that his skill set would be greater, uh, more appreciated. Hmm. Well, sir, if I may retract my last statement, it's now that I look at them a little bit harder. It seems to be the same line from each of them that they were rather unhappy with Starfleet, but there was no indication of such in their service record or counselor activity there this came out of nowhere sir and i'm starting to wonder there's something more going on on that ship i'm starting to believe the same i laughed at something that normally i not normally i would never laugh at so that's cause for concern do you know where uh crumandora and ensign holmquist are Last I have record of them, they beamed to the same place you beamed. Uh, okay. Thank you, Lieutenant. And when he can find them, he'll just kind of wave Commander Dolrum over. Yes, sir. 
uh, he'll just kind of relay that information from Lieutenant Dusk to the commander, just like, there has to be something else going on here. Whatever, I guess, influenced them might be starting to influence me. I'm not quite sure. Um, at this point, we're going to have a scene change, so lose one momentum. McCall, one quick thing before we complete the scene change. Yes. I keep I always forget to do this and I'm just just because it's not too far. Since I used my determination on that last roll I did, could I roll a challenge die to see if I regain it due to my veteran? Oh, your veteran. Yes, that would be a thing for you to do. Hey, yes, hey. I get it back. Nice. Really good. Uh okay. Uh so the scene changed when the individuals beamed off the lunette. So we're technically in the new scene. Um, at this point, I would like... Uh, actually, I'd like all of you, please, including Dusk, to roll a Presence Plus Medicine test. Once again, I will not be saying the difficulty. Um, I do have a very important question. Yes. Um, as a Cameloid, Canon's not really clear on this, but as like a shapeshifter, like, say, a changeling... Mm -hmm they're not really affected by spores, diseases, etc. Yeah. Um, so do I have advantage on this role? Do I have um, I will focus say, that applies? You know, what? anything there. Uh, if you t spend one momentum, I will um, I will say that you are immune from this one test. This time. I will spend that momentum. All right. The rest As of you... Part of my great... Oh, uh, part of my traits is I'm immune to biological diseases. This is not biological. Okay. I is it question. cultural by any chance? <laughs> Probably not. No. Uh, sorry, was that Crawford asking? Yeah. Um, Keevan. Uh, well, Crawford yeah, Keevan asked about the cultural yeah. thing, but Crawford was asking something else. Yeah. Um. Whenever you're asking us to make these rules, do we feel anything start to like come over us or... The first time, no, but I will tell you what happens after the second time. Okay. Um, concerning that Crawford has sort of faced this before, and he knows he has to keep going as the leader here, hmm. um, he's going to use his point of determination on this task. Okay. Uh, what value are you tapping? Uh, both The one I got with his arc, uh, both body and mind are important in leadership. That sounds like a good one. And then I'll, I'll, mm, yeah, I'll spend our last two momentum to get a third die in this case. Ooh, wow, you're really pushing through this. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um. Yeah, I don't have a focus here. Okay. So that is uh six successes. Okay. Uh yeah. So just because Crawford succeeded so much, I'll give you two momentum back. Uh, let's see. Nothing is felt on... So, let's go down the tables. Or, let's go down the list here. Uh, Dusk, Just you feel... Thing. Sorry? Sorry. Um, this effect, does it, like, change how our characters perceive something for a while? Or is it, like, a one-off thing? It is um, a linger... It is an emo... Uh, it is an emotion that you believe that you've been having for some time. Okay. That's coming to the fore. Uh, so, Commander Daldrum, you're starting to see all sorts of interesting possibilities here for you and your family. Like, like obviously they're in need of skilled help, and you can think of several ways that you and Apatu on your own could be of assistance. But bring, bringing, the fa bringing the family here, well, that just sounds pretty cool. And this is starting to sound more and more like a good idea to you. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Keevan, this is technology you have never seen. And you are you catch yourself grinning at the prospect of becoming the ship's engineer and the one that oh, takes nice. care of it. Uh, Commander Demos, um, your thoughts are a bit more sluggish just because you are who you are. Um, you're of two minds, really, both simultaneous and sort of clashing, just like an individual who can see two sides of an argument, but not sure which side to take on one hand well on one hand you have a duty to starfleet and eventually to find more of your species 
On the second hand, you can't help but feel that despite your, you know, Starfleet's creed, you can't help but feel that you've been sort of isolated and treated as different. And even though you are here, uh, while you're here on this ship, you don't feel that from anyone. Everyone here seems to be as unique as you are. And if anyone has any chance of finding their species, that'd be these guys. Uh, not Mr. Crawford. You catch yourself realizing um, during ah, during one of those captaincy courses that most cadets slept through, including yourself, uh, there was at least one portion um, of me uh, mental uh, mental, what was the phrase I'm looking for? Fortitude? Yeah, mental fortitude or um, mental subjugation. Mm -hmm. um, and various tactics used by several psychic beings oh, throughout the that have been encountered for, since Kirk's time onward. Even before Kirk, really. And some portion of its training immediately snaps to the, the fore and blocks whatever influence you are feeling. You realize now that Amadrix's joke was not funny. You realize that you are being influenced by something. And you Lieutenant kinda, Dusk, yeah. um, I'm going to say that you get the... Um, as part of your success to negate whatever happened, you get the subconscious um, pull to just pull the lunette back a s significant distance from this thing. And I mean, bring the rest of the ships with you, of course. I my first instinct is uh, to do that, but I'm also curious: uh, could I potentially beam people back from the ship at this point? Uh, the ship does not seem to be shielded at the moment, so yes, you could. Okay. Um, I am going to move the lunette back, still keep somewhat nearby, um, but I'm going to tell whatever science and medical officers I have to begin scanning the area for uh, anything that might be a uh, mind-controlling or mind-altering particle wave signal, whatever. Okay. Then um, I just for the sake of giving you someone with medicine, I'll say that one of the support medical characters came along. Um, where would they be? We'll say Jensen came along. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that makes sense to me. Um, where's the medical people? There we are. Uh, Calvin Jensen is on board. Uh, Ensign Calvin Jensen. Which rhymes, actually. It's hilarious. So, uh, Mr. Jensen, I'm going to need you to look into these things I've described and do it in a very quick fashion. All right. Uh, so, uh, if someone wishes to take Calvin Jensen, uh, this will be an insight medicine test. Uh, if someone wants to roll for a roll, they could assist with uh, insight science. Uh, I have Jensen pulled up already. Yeah. I'll, I'll roll for... They're all sure. All right, and this is an activation for both of them, I believe. Yeah. For Calvin. Uh, this with... is going to be a difficulty of three, I should say. Oh yay! With um, diagnosis, exper or experimental medicine. No, neither of which would be if anyone has say uh, energy um, signal analysis or mental discipline, something like that would work. But, no, nothing here, I'm afraid. Let's see. Uh, okay. So, insight science for Errol. Uh, who are you going to have take the lead on this, Scotty? Uh, we can do either. Anybody okay. opposed to having Jensen have the quick study talent. That should be fine. I think in this case, Errol might actually be better for the lead because they are shooting for a 13, where I think Jensen is shooting at shooting for a 12. Yes. Okay. I'll have Errol take the lead then. 2d20. Okay. I mean, okay. if Earl has determination, now would be a good time to spend it. 
Now I gave her another focus, so. Hmm. I'm afraid right now, uh, between uh, Calvin Jensen and Ural uh, poking their way through the sensor systems, they're not able to penetrate much of... Well, they're not able to see much of anything. At least nothing that looks or matches any previously known uh, psionic or or psionic waveforms. I open a channel back to Cerberus Station. Okay. Is, uh, is, is Lieutenant Dusk uh, attempting to reach the current acting commanding officer of Cerberus Station? Uh, uh, one second here. Who would that be? Would that be, would that be Arya? Uh, nope. This is this is Commander Bernie Jail here. How can no. I be of assistance? Well, sir, it appears that we have some sort of mind-altering or mind-controlling phenomenon going on here. I'm getting officers resigning out of nowhere. Uh, there's basically rumor or not rumors, but thinking that Starfleet isn't correct, you know, basic things that are out of character for a lot of people. Uh, I was hoping you might be able to provide me some insight. Uh, should I simply beam the away team back and uh, return to service station, or would you like to send more ships out this way, sir? As a Beta Z, I can tell you 100% that anyone who falls to simple emotional manipulation is a weak-minded individual and should be remanded anyways. I personally would re reprimand them on their file simply for being them. However, as this is the cap, I'm assuming, of course, that the captain has beamed over. That is correct, sir. Well, then I believe that the proper protocol states that you, the acting commanding officer in the field should take whatever steps necessary to protect the captain and their commanding officers. Thank you. Because when I called you, I really wanted the rulebook quoted at me. Lunette out. And yes. I just sort of you... sigh deeply as the line is cut and say, I'm giving them ten minutes. If that happens again, I'm beaming them back. As as you cut the core, as you cut the um, connection, Bernie Jail goes back into the ready room, leans back, puts his feet up on the desk, and goes, yep, captaincy. That's what is, that's what's in the store for me. You're a good commander there, Birdie Jail. <laughs> oh, I love him. Okay, back to the um, the Carna Marvelous. You guys are currently going through a bit of an existential crisis down there on the engineering deck. Where Captain Crawford, I think you're the only one who is currently having um, any... any sort of mental clarity. Yeah. Um, he's going to find another like sort of quiet corner. Captain Crawford to the Lunette. Might help if I was unmuted. This is the Lunette. Go ahead. Um, I regained a bit of my senses. Um, something's going on here. I feel like... And I'm sure Amadrix is out of his silence. Just like, I feel like we need to leave. Very good, sir. I'll begin beaming you all back immediately. Uh, find the locations of Crewman Dora and Ensign Holmquist if you can as well. Will do. Okay, so the Lunette can, I believe, have two transporter rooms, each with two pads? Uh, let me double check that. I want to see how many folks you can bring back at once. Uh, four, actually. Uh, nope, three pads per, so you can actually beam all six. Um, so that will be a, uh, who wants to operate the transporter room? I'll do um, it myself. Oh, okay. Okay. So we'll be down here in the transporter room where Lieutenant Dusk is going to be operating. And keep in mind, I believe the lunette still has advanced sensors, which should make life a little easier. Right. If I know the difficulty on this, so it starts at two. The target is not on a pad. That's plus one. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it from the transporter room. That goes down by one. We have advanced sensors. Goes down by one again. So unless you impose any difficulty on this, it's a straight one difficulty. Yep. And I will uh, dump some threat to make this a difficulty of three. 
Okay, then. Uh, we have two momentum. Mm -hmm. I will spend one of it for a third die here. Okay. And someone can roll the lunette. That'd be, I believe, sensors engineering for the lunette. And control uh, engineering for Miss, for Miss Dusk. I'll roll for the lunette. Okay. Well, I got the three successes we nice. need. And Lynette and... gets the momentum back. Okay. Niall, Excellent. Uh, Mr. Crawford, Mr. Dolrum, and Demos appear on the primary pad. Whereas on the second one, Keevan, uh, Eral, and Holmquist appear. And as soon as I see the transport is complete, I call the bridge and I say, Bridge, get us the hell out of here. And tell all surrounding ships in the area to take us back through the transwarp hub. Um, both uh, the USS Aurora and the SS Apollo uh, fall in formation immediately behind you as you guys beam away. Um, for everyone who came from the ship that is not Captain Crawford, uh, you feel a, a very strong emotional longing or emotional need to return to the circus ship. However, uh, the feeling fades the further and further you guys get away from you, from it. Um, in the engineering, or in the secondary transporter room, um, Ensign Holmquist turns to uh, Lieutenant Commander Keevan. Sir, um, I submitted my resignation um, out of uh, Hastily and was not poorly f and was not properly thinking it through. Could you please just rescind it without it looking bad on my record? I would. I don't need this other dark spot on my record, please, sir. Holmquist, we'll discuss this once we get back to the station. And all this matter is dealt with. Understood. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh. Okay, um, primary transporter room. Uh, what do you guys wish to do? Up to the bridge? Uh, yeah, Demos is also going to check on Decon, making sure she's following suit. Uh, Decon, is, Decon will say that she is following the orders of the organic, but would prefer that they come from that they be confirmed through you. Yeah, he will confirm them for her to follow, or head back to the station. She will. She agrees. Okay. So, Captain, what the hell actually was going on over there? Um, from what I could gather in my mental clarity, there seemed to just be simply a tour that they were giving us, but maybe there was something else on that ship that was trying to alter our minds and make us want to stay. I'm not sure if it had anything to do with the food we were given or the energy eh, the energy source we were shown but whatever well, it is that ship didn't have the right vibe well given the fact that two of our own officers were affected by whatever it is I would say that it's a spatially local uh, phenomenon that extends outward from that ship um, but sir I, I would be remiss if I did not simply state uh, what do you want us to do here? Uh, I believe regulation would state that we were to render any aid and assistance, and that would mean uh, reversing this phenomenon, because by the sound of it, uh, we are possibly dealing with people being held against their own will, even if they don't know it. Uh, alternatively, sir, it would be prudent to at least throw around uh, warning buoys. I think both of those options would be something as now I'm not the sharpest when it comes to engineering is there any way we can alter EVA suits to maybe help block out those kinds of signals uh, Lieutenant Commander uh, turning to Keevan that's very possible I mean we might almost have to get you know it's kind of difficult when you can get when it's nothing that you can really pick up. I need somebody with a little more medical experience to be able to help me out with this one. I can't give you a good answer. 
That's fine. Um, well, in that case, uh, Lieutenant, feel free to put out some warning buoys. We need to... I think we need to go to the drawing board a bit and see what we can do. Cool. Are we going to let the ship know what our plan is? Because we just up and left them. Oh, uh, yeah, we are definitely going to let them know. Okay. Uh, so you're going to open hailing frequencies? Yeah, I'll open... Yeah, I'll open, hail, eh, open hailing frequencies. All right. Uh, Ring Mistress Cass appears on the screen. Uh, it's not hard to see the confusion in her face. Captain, you are... Re- are I hope that you are leaving to receive, retrieve some components for our assistance. Oh, uh, we aren't doing that, Cass. Um, for whatever reason, when we were on board that ship, uh, I'm not sure if it was something with your ship or the space around it, but somehow my crew's minds were being altered for so for their safety and obviously mine. We're back on our own ships. We are going to come back and help you. We just need to find a way to keep ourselves safe first. Because if we can't do our jobs right, we not be I'm not eh, we might not be able to prepare your sh- eh, not prepare repair your ship right. She smiles and sort of shakes her head. Captain, that is the allure of the circus calling. Every one of us has felt it and has joined. Your running away is disappointing, but we look forward to seeing you return. And she breaks out her maw of uh, fangs in a big smile. And please, uh, please uh, help us. We look forward to our next port of call. We are well behind schedule now. Of course. Crawford out. And she winks out of existence. <clears throat> uh, you guys reach the Transwarp hub. Uh, the Transwarp gate on this side of the network. Enter it with no problem whatsoever and make your way back to the station. So, we could care. Let's see. Uh, how would you like to proceed? Um. I think. Well, first thing, Crawford will go to Ops and tell Jail to get the hell out of his chair. And two, uh, he'll probably call some sort of senior staff meeting along with the two other uh, crew members that were on board the ship to possibly try and throw around some ideas as to what we can do in terms of repairing this ship. Okay, so we'll have a meeting in the briefing room. Let's assemble the senior staff as soon as I can. Okay, so we need Dusk and... And you wanted Aral and... um, Holmquist? Uh, I thought it was Dura and Holmquist. Oh, yeah, sorry, my bad, Dura. Dura and Holmquist. Okay. So, both Dura and Holmquist, um, I'm assuming have their... Well, there would be a quick uh, sidebar with Dura asking sheepishly for her job back. Um, would Lieutenant Commander Demos give it to her? Demos just look at her for a moment, just like, not getting a well with your commanding officer. I, I don't know where those feelings came from, sir. Uh, as I wish I had a good answer for you, sir. But as, as when I go back and look through our the change of ma- of management and commanding officers, uh, I thought everything was fine. And then when I looked back at it fairly recently. Uh, that sort of just came unbidden when I was on the ship, and 
I started noticing things and thinking about things in a different way. And Sorry, sir. I, I think I may have to set up an appointment with the counselor again. Just look at the note and press the delete button. I don't know what resignation letter you're talking about. She smiles and uh, goes into a formal, or stands at attention and says, Sir, thank you, sir. Let's see what we can learn from this. Okay. Let's clear out some of the old tokens that have been lying around here. Okay, I believe the gang's all here. It's your meeting, Crawford. Yep. So, we have to find a way to repair that ship without our own minds being altered. Um, Commander Arya, what do you know about mind-altering effects, be it drugs, spatial anomalies, etc.? Well, I can say that uh, you're going to have to be a lot more specific than that because there are quite a number of phenomenon that would do what you are describing. Well, according to... Well, this is simply an assumption from Lieutenant Dusk, but there's appears to be a spatial anomaly that's centered on the ship. We don't know much else other than that they're... Captain is the best word I can use. Uh, cast described as the allure of the circus. Uh, Homequest sort of gingerly raises his hand. Uh, sirs, collectively, if I can say something, when I please, when I was in, when I was on the lunette near the uh, near the ship. I felt uncertain and sort of disoriented and distracted. And then when I, as soon as I set foot on the well, circus ship, sir, I felt relieved and happy as if I'd found my home. And he sort of looks to Dura, who just looks down at her at the table and silently nods. It, it's difficult to explain, sir. I... It just became a sure action that I had to leave Starfleet and go to the ship. Hmm. And Commander Arya, mm -hmm. um, as your chief medical officer, you have access to their medical files. You know that both Dura and Holmquist have long struggled with emotional vulnerabilities. Uh, mm -hmm. Dura's from a lack of uncertainty because her species is so f uh, prone to fear. She fights it on a constant basis. And Holmquist's from his counseling record sort of comes from uh, an, inf uh, an inferiority complex. Hmm. But that doesn't explain why the other members of the crew experience something similar. True. It's uh, roll me an insight medicine, please. Um, if you have counseling or psychiatric, things. I do not. That uh, is one of the very things she does not do. Uh, difficulty of one for this, then. I'll just roll it straight and see what happens. All right. Uh, one success. Okay. Um, judging from the so because the sen the senior staff while, well. It basically comes down to uh, emotional sensitivity. Um, judging from after-action reports submitted by the senior staff um, and those that were affected, it seemed that it, latent insecurities were exploited and mm -hmm. Holmquist and Dura just had the largest insecurities. Unfortunately, I, there's nothing I can do to just fix that. That's not a drug I could give or anything like that. Um, I will say for Demos, he didn't put in his full report. Fair enough. Well, uh, and this is her speaking aloud. 
honestly, I, I would have to agree with what Lieutenant Dusk here said earlier. We're dealing with a situation, at least if I read all the reports correctly, where uh, individuals from pretty much everywhere, anyone who visits or gets near that ship, uh, you, they are subtly influenced by the quote-unquote lure of the circus and remain there indefinitely. And there was a comment here. Where, where is it? And she, like, digs through her pads. Uh, something about a character, the engineer, Eastmaster, whatever. Apparently them mentioning something about a second host. Hmm. Yeah, nobody pried too closely at that one, so... Uh, I bring it up because my point is it sounds like this is a a generational ship that uh, maintains its generational status by continually stealing uh, passers-by. Which... Think there's uh, any... Oh, sorry, I'll let her finish. I would say, no, no, you go ahead. Um, is there any possible way to reverse the anomaly on that ship, or...? Until we know what's causing it, uh, your guess is as good as mine. I mean... It's a macabre option, but there is the option of beaming all sentient life off the ship and then blowing it up. I'm sure that would fix it. Right, but that's the place we... Well, not we. They have considered home for years. To Yes, but a home against their will, and they don't even know it. It's a giant Stockholm Syndrome vessel. Exactly. Hmm. This could be something difficult to figure out. I mean, how do you combat insecurity? It's a hard thing to even fight. Lord knows that I fought it when I started captaining this station, and hell, it's probably what led to some of my flubs as a captain. We've all had insecurities over the years. It's just part of our nature. What I find in that the effects wear off after you get a certain distance away. I'm not necessarily kidnap people, but it'd be interesting to see how they react outside of the circumstances. That it would. Um, it's a good thing we didn't bring that ship back here. We yes, I shudder to think what would have happened if this had happened to the entire station. We'd have a very large problem on our hands. Jim yes, cries. Is, this was much more of an isolated incident. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, go ahead, Demos. Oh, there's no dampening field we can do anything like that. What about, um, well, that does not going to help with the engineering aspect either. I was thinking of maybe making someone a little less responsive, slowing them down, down dulling their senses, but if they're going to be engineering stuff, it's not good. Area literally face palms and says, Oh god, this is such a stupid idea, but I'm gonna say it anyway. What if, and hear me out, what if Are you we thinking? grounded up or not grounded, we rounded up all the narcissists on the station <laughs> <laughs> and sent them in. That's not where I was going, Commander Arya, but I like where your mind is. But aren't narcissists insecure in their own ways? Well, they they're so insecure that they literally believe they're infallible. So either one of two things happens. They immediately get converted or they're immune. And <laughs> so without, while being as stern-faced as possible, uh, Dorum's face Crawford, Crawford things of like a possible person we could send and Crawford just sends a text only message to Arya saying jail question <laughs> mark I just nod very enthusiastically 
I don't know want to know what you two are scheming over there. Oh, I think I, I know what they're scheming. We could send Decon over. Her There's a programming thought. wouldn't be compromised. Another thought could be sending the Ferengi. They're immune to mind control or mind reading. Are there any Ferengi on the station right now? We have the embassy. We yeah, can't. you have the embassy. Um, there's always the embassy around. And for fun, just because I think it's cool to the plot, I will say that the Limitless Latinum is still around in Lasai space. Okay. Aren't I Klingons just... also immune? At a... Um, no, but there is a Klingon adjacent species. I'm trying to remember what it is. I just like the fact that we're going to toss our Ferengi into a literal rat maze just to see if they get affected. Well, no. Oh, the joke is that a closer. Ferengi, a narcissist, and a beta <laughs> would walk into a bar. <laughs> Actually, That's in this case, the, the beta is the narcissist. So, two birds, one stone. Uh -huh. The Ferengi True. misses the bar. <laughs> Short joke. I guess, what, do we... I want to try and get some close and then I think the one that might have the most information for us is that Amadrix individual I believe his name was maybe if we get him slightly away from the ship we can maybe get more information about this second host uh and this is uh, Dusk speaking at area. Uh, she says, uh, it, it would be a good idea, sir. However, I worry that uh, we might be straying into kidnapping territory if we do not take everyone from the ship. One is a rescue operation. The other is, well, abduction and interrogation. This is true. I think destroying the ship itself should be somewhat of a last resort if we can figure out what's going on there and reverse it that would be our obviously our most beneficial option oh since we're back on the station Demos is going to send the information of the life science to Rami okay uh, Rami will process and we'll have a report ready within a few minutes uh, she just wants to read over uh, what's the population number hmm uh, so, uh, on the ship itself, um, or the, the Carna Marvelous, uh, contains 25 sentient spe or sentient humanoid-ish, within, you know, positive, or within, you know, plus or minus, whatever the standard deviation is for half-humanoid, half-snake creatures. Um, there is roughly, there's approximately 125, um, uh, fauna creatures, and these bio creatures that they call jesters there appear to be at last at count about 250 okay kind of a fine line walking with the prime directive it really yeah that's sort of what i was going to mention in character but they have faster than light technology so i don't think it's first contact or not first contact uh prime directive territory yeah, the, I mean, most Star Treks is Prime Directive becomes, or Prime Directive takes on a different tact once a species invents warp drive. But I think that means that warp drive is the easiest, faster than light method that species would invent, and there's got to be others out there. So, yeah, take it as you will. You know, the main aspect of the prime directive I'm looking at, Captain, is forcing our will on someone. Granted, there is good evidence to support that they're being brainwashed, but we don't know if that's the full case. Maybe their species likes being on this ship. But maybe not all of them do. There's also the question of how long whether that is something that is permanent or if, if it is not of the will of them. No, 
that's the thing, like, we're gonna have to find out one way or another, so we're gonna have to take someone. And that's, well, a violation. Hmm. Unless we could convince them otherwise. question is how do we go about that we could recommend that we would take all of them to their next waypoint and we'll have a ship tow their vessel to it but due to structural integrity of the ship in the... we could say that we want to move all of their um, the inhabitants of the ship to a new ship for structural integrity purposes, which is not far from the truth. It'll give them time to hopefully detox from whatever's affecting them, if they can, and if it's permanent, then not much can be done. Do we have any of the support fleet close enough by that they could assist us? I think that's Dusk it. does speak up at that. Yep. Uh, and Dusk uh, pulls up a pad and says the Hawking is a day out. The Roosevelt I could make get here in the next 12 hours, but they'd be pushing it. And if we really want the Apophis, could be here by next week. So basically we have the Hawking and the Roosevelt, is that what you said? More or less, yes. Okay. I know the the Hawking is a Horizon class, I think. That's correct. And then what kind of class is the Roosevelt? I believe that, that... would be a Hestia, sir. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, would... with the cape, not the capable, but the uh, crew capacity on both ships, could we get a decent portion of the crew that's on that ship? onto both the I guess we would include the Lunette in this, the Lunette, the Hawking and the Roosevelt and My understanding there. is that if we were to transfer some of the non-essential personnel on the Roosevelt over to the station temporarily, they would have more than enough room. Uh, I specifically bring up the Roosevelt for two reasons, sir uh, First is, is that the captain uh, Mr. Crowley, sorry, Captain Crowley <laughs> Uh, is a uh, skilled tactician and apparently has dealt with uh, a multi-vector assault mode before. Which brings me up to my next point. The multi-vector assault mode would allow us to uh, further this sort of tractor beam towing scenario and would allow us to s pretty much subtly test at what range this phenomenon manifests. What I mean is you would split the ship up into three parts. Uh, park one at different dis at one distance, park the second one at another, third at a third distance, and then you sort of experiment from there. It seems like an excellent idea. Uh, Lieutenant, send a message out to the Roosevelt and see if they can get here as quickly as they can. I just tap a button on my pad and the message is sent. Still would not be a bad idea to have the Hawking also here on standby should any ills occur. Another excellent point. Um, I'll send the message to the Hawking personally. And Aria speaks up. So am I going to have to get a narcissist still, or...? One of the uh, slip nears. Okay. I, I will go dig through my medical records to find a suitable candidate, and she winks at the captain. And he'll just kind of resend that same message. With I a just more I emphasis. wink again. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, I'm putting on airs. We all know who's going. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we do. Okay, so it's a good place to take a quick break. Uh, so we will be back here in about ten minutes. So at half past the hour, we shall resume. Ooh. Uh, let me just get the counter starting down. Okay. And we just Okay, we will be back shortly. See you guys soon.
Okay, and we're back. So, as it was discussed, uh, the Roosevelt will get back here in about 12 hours. Is there anything people wish to do in the meantime? Scenes at, scenes at the bar, or anything of the sort. I'm going to yeah. suggest a family movie night with my family. Okay. Uh, does that include Nia? Yes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> These awkward conversations. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. Uh, what is the movie that you guys want to watch? Oh, I didn't think that far ahead. <laughs> Trading Places. <laughs> we'll watch the original Jumanji. Ah. What year is it? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, anything you and Nia wish to talk about? Not particularly, unless Nia wants to bring anything up. No, no. Uh, just, just idle conversation. Right. Enjoying a nice family get together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the time. Um, I think Crawford would actually want to visit Demos. Um, let's have this in uh the old uh what is it that training like that boxing ring that's in the security office. Okay. Sure. Let's have um. Uh. Let's see what happens. Should I have a medical personnel on standby? Metal fist. <laughs> I mean, Crawford would probably be wearing the appropriate protective gear because, you know, Demos is made of metal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, goodbye, Q. Okay, uh, Demos and the captain are in the ring together. Any particular reason why you want me in a ring? Um, what's your experience with hand-to-hand -hand combat, Lieutenant? Uh, it's what you would consider, uh, what's the term now? Krav Maga. I see. Well, uh, back when we had the Master Chief, she was trying to teach me a bit about uh, being able to physically fight so I figured I might as well test out what I've learned a bit alright well, go ahead give a strike alright you guys know how this goes opposing daring plus security roles I believe oh, I'm gonna let him hit me I wanna see how well he does okay um, this will be a zero task then for the captain okay uh, scene um, change, by the way. You're down to one momentum. Yeah. I will say he actually has a focus now because after all the stuff, he I decided to swap out one of his focuses to give him hand-to-hand -hand combat as a focus. Ah. Character development. Cool. So, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, so neat. that's three. That's uh, four momentum. And nicely, Crawford. What do you want to do to Demos? Um, he would probably just, like, go for, uh, there's some scarring along Demos's armor, right, from, I think, several sessions ago? I believe so, yes. Uh, he would just kind of aim for that section of his armor and just try to punch as hard as he can into it. Okay. So what, that, that's actually what... Am I going to roll damage here? Yeah, still, if you're just... saying you're punching as hard as you can, then yeah, roll me challenge dice. I believe it is... Five? Yeah, I believe because it's five, it's and it has knockdown. So, I believe unarmed strikes have knockdown. Yeah. Uh, Demos, you're... I believe you can spend momentum to avoid being knocked on your butt. He'd have to spend three, because it's for each effect. Ah, uh, no, I like the moment of being banked. Okay, um, Demos, you find yourself flat on your metallic butt. Ah, uh, that's, that's a good hit. Uh, looks like she did something right in teaching you how to fight. 
He's just going to hold out a hand. He's like, come on. Hmm. I'm not going to knee underneath the chin. <laughs> he, he'll, Crawford will grab his hand and pull him up. I'm going to headbutt you. <laughs> oh. <sighs> okay. Like he's wearing the right protective gear. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now we're into opposed daring securities. Although I'm going to spend some threat to um, allow uh, Demos to roll one extra dice. Ooh, okay. Because I think it's funny. Uh, I'll spend a momentum to get a third as well. <laughs> Well, Ooh. Demos, what do you want to do? Uh, so basically when he helps me get up, and I, you know, he's like hesitant. Um, when I said like I'm going to headbutt you, instead I'm just going to grab him by the vest he's wearing, and I'm just going to reel back and then pull hard. <laughs> I'm going to use that uh, that that slight slope in my. Uh, Forehead there, just to really connect with uh, the helmet guard he's wearing. All right, and... roll me challenge dice, please. I think for you that's six. Uh, okay, there's. You know what? I'm gonna use momentum to roll three more dice. <laughs> uh, Would we get any momentum off of his? Uh, no, at this stage, because it's opposed, I'm not going to. If we were doing full prolonged stuff, I'd give each one a different pool, but... Oh, God. Um, there's no way the captain can... Uh, uh, captain, the last... I can avoid the injury by spending yeah. momentum. Yeah, he can spend two, two momentum to avoid the injury, <laughs> or he could blow his determination. But if he blows his determination and Demos hits him again, he dies. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. I can do. Uh, Captain's already blown his determination back on the yeah. Marvelous, so... Yeah. So either avoids the injury, or he just goes down. Daylight's out. Mm -hmm. Um, he... Yeah, I'll, I'll spend the two momentum to keep him up. Well, okay. we did have five a minute... I would simply point out that uh, unless I'm misremembering, you still count as having an injury, so you are going to need medical treatment at the end of this. Yep. Um, if he does more than your stress and damage, I mean, you have, what, nine, ten stress? Uh, let me look. I think I actually have a little more. Uh, I actually have 13. Okay, so he would have to roll pretty damn well to actually lethally injure you again. I add piercing on this no, kid. <laughs> I fight to win, mortal. Bam. <laughs> After that blow kind of connects, you see him kind of wobble, but he's just like, okay. Ow. Krabaga um, is not a fair fighting style. It's meant about disabling your opponent as quickly as possible. Normally, I would have you pinned down to the ground and knock you out, but more fun, unexpected ways. Yeah. Um, you might want to get that looked at before that becomes a scar. Yeah. Oh. Might yeah. need to see if I have a concussion as well. How many fingers am I holding up? And he's just like, oh, hold up two, three, one, four. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Crawford to Commander yeah, Arya. Four lights. This is Commander Arya. Why do you sound like you're drunk? Um, <laughs> I decided to have some practice sparring with uh, our chief of security. Oh, I think I might need a little bit of help. Demos, bring him to sick bay and tell him that he's an idiot. <laughs> yep, doctor's orders. Captain, you're an idiot. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying. I'm... Okay, I'm trying. It's okay. I'll take you to sick bay now. All right. <laughs> and I'm just gonna watch him walk, and I was like, no, nope, no, nope, I'm just gonna pick you up like a princess. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Wrong lab. Right lab. Okay, here we are in sick bay. Where area? You already have the bed prepared because the captain's coming in. 
Put him down here, Demos. Uh, how many people? You, how many people saw you on the way in? I walked to the promenade. Okay, that was more emotional damage than I was going to suggest, but that's the captain's problem. As I said, crab Gaw is meant to be devastating. <laughs> she actually laughs in character, like she's like, "Okay, give me a minute." <laughs> All right, well, let's give you a once over. See how bad the damage is. And I run it over with my medical tricorder. Well, I have good news and I have bad news for you, Captain. Which would you want to hear first? Just give me the bad news. The bad news is that you have Rigelian flu. The good news is that I have a cure for it. Okay. <laughs> Tell me, how many fingers am I holding up? And I do the same finger game where I do one, four, <laughs> three, two. You can stop screwing with me, doctor. You have a mild concussion. It's nothing I major. I, I give him a, a hypo spray in the neck. Just don't get punched in the next 10, 15 minutes and you'll be fine. Okay. And uh, in the future, Captain, I would appreciate knowing before you do something like this again, because... Uh, could be much worse. Of course. Just when I think I'm improving, I get knocked out in one hit again. <sighs> to be fair, I'm metal. Yeah, and Ember wasn't, and she did the same thing. Yeah, true. <laughs> you, you know, years ago, before I joined Starfleet, I had this big old Nausicaan punch me as hard as he could in the chest. He broke his hand comical. He just struck me, looked at his hand as it was shattered. At least he didn't hit me that hard. I didn't hit you back as that hard either. Good job when wearing the headgear. I just realized I could have cracked your skull. Killed my commanding officer. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I'm going to mandate that maybe some of you in this room come in for counseling later, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Dolorum's going to walk in. Okay. Uh, what? Uh, in walks Dolrum. And good. here comes the rest of the welcoming party. You come to uh, give our fair captain a word of advice, Mr. Dolrum? Yeah. Leave the punching to me. Nope. Mm -hmm. Nope. Are we drunk? Is this a thing now? I mean, it could be a thing. I was the only that really gave Ember a run for her money. I don't prefer beating up my command staff. You know, looks bad on the record. Oh no, this was totally worth every rumor I've heard since walking through the promenade there, Captain. <sighs> he oh, is just... very light, by the way. Oh, Captain, just wait until you hear what Apatu and I were talking about during our before our movie. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> well, don't keep us in the dark. What were you talking about? Oh, we were just, just trying to figure out um, which one of the single ladies on the station would be great for the Captain. You know what? I have the perfect person in mind. I poke my head out. Hey, Aisha! <laughs> uh, Lieutenant Aisha sticks her head out of uh, one of the um, medical... St uh, the medicine storage base. Uh, yes, Commander? You're going on a date with the captains, doctor's orders. Figure out when and where later. Uh, <laughs> Commander, that is not medically uh, sound. Any emotional... Any emotionally intense sessions with a Delton could prove fatal. Uh, well, we'll consider it a learning experience for the captain. Crawford just walks out of med bay. <laughs> <laughs> he just uh, has this look of like, okay, no, I'm done. And then he just walks out. As we continue to talk about maybe other uh, bachelorettes on the station. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wait, we could try decon. She'd kill the captain. Oh, God. Uh, I tried to make it funny. I did, she'd just kill him. You I probably don't wanna... hear like a muffled scream on the other side of the door. <laughs> I 
I appreciate you wanting me to be promoted, Demos, but I don't want to become ca the captain of the station by that means. Uh, you know, it, it might be interesting being an XO that's the XO of the station. You just want to be an XO. Yeah, that's what I get out of that. I did hear there was a cute botanist. Of course, Apatu was telling me that, so I don't know whether that was male or female. Yeah, I was going to say, do we know which the captain prefers? I just sort of went on the limb there. Oh, yeah, preference is a thing here. I don't care. <sighs> and then we dissolve into girl talk. We're like, well, maybe he likes this, or maybe he <laughs> likes that. <laughs> Rami, pull up the captain's dating preferences. He must have an online dating profile somewhere. <laughs> uh, Federation now. <laughs> okay, let's move on to something else. Um, Kevin, you've been quiet. Is there anything you'd like to do? Well, mostly what I'm trying to do is figure out why we had that little issue on the Apollo as we were leaving besides the... I felt like something was off besides the fact that we realized that the ship was actually a meter longer than it was supposed to. Hmm. Uh, roll me Insight Engineering, please. Uh, difficulty... Uh, well, just because you've got so long to play. Look at it. Uh, difficulty 1. There you, well, there you go. Okay. Oh, congratulations. Uh, it turns out that uh, not only was the rear assembly off by a lot, it turns out that there was some sort... There was a blockage in the starboard plasma manifold. It, only about 50% was getting through. Uh, ah, so that's where I put that rock. <laughs> ha! Yep, you found it. Okay, we will <laughs> definitely remove that rock... And then after the experience we just had, I think it's time to go to the bar. <laughs> oh, bar sounds like a good place to go. Uh, after the shenanigans in sickbay, uh, Demos would be in the bar too. He'd be off duty. Uh, okay, we'll have a bar scene. <clears throat> okay. Demos... Uh, you wander into the bar, and you find Keevan staring at a rock on the table. It's going to point out, like, what's that? That better start purring and actually be furry. What is that? It is neither of those. This is another reason why the ship didn't get out of the shuttle bay just as easily. Apparently there really was a rock in one of the exhaust port. And no, I didn't put it in there on purpose. Did that have to like come from the refinery? Like, how did the, how did a random rock? Oh wait, there's an entity that can do things by you know waving or snapping their fingers, right? Yeah, but I don't think we were gonna have we're having a queue around here since last since the beginning of the year. You know, we already had that little incident, but I think we were too you know not far enough into the ship for that to even happen. I just think it was one of the engineers accidentally kicked something up that we got when we were bringing everything up from uh, the manufacturing bay. Uh, so the tribble on the table, or the rock on the table, all of a sudden shifts into a tribble and begins purring. <laughs> Demos, is this some kind of sick joke? I don't know. That's... Okay. Okay, that's not natural. This was a rock five minutes ago. Now it's a triple. Or at least it looks like a triple. Sounds like a triple. Can we throw now it off it... the wall like a triple? It, that, no, it's, it's a living thing now. Let's not abuse it. Mazzy, strongest drink, please. Strongest by your definition, Mr. Demos, or by Keevan's? Uh, oh, right, that ship showing up. Sorry. Uh, Keevan's. Right. And make mine a double. You got it. And as the Tribble hops off the table and manifests into Lieutenant Dusk, she says, make that a triple. 
Why oh my you... sweet Jesus. <laughs> Why were you a rock inside the Apollo? I just sort of look at you weird. I was a Tribble, not a rock. Camouflage. Keep it. Um, when I picked this thing up, it was a rock. Well, I can see we all need a drink because apparently we have a conundrum on our hands. Uh, and a quick, um, a and Mozzie delivers several uh, rather large or rather strong shots of something red to your tables. Drink up, ladies, gentlemen, robot. No, sorry, gentlemen. And he. So, what's this I hear about a mind controlling spaceship? And he leans over the table and begins polishing it as you continue to drink on it. Apparently, it's a ship that can mind control people. Or at least they don't judge. And he takes a shot. Ah. Uh, Demos, my friend, I never judge. Unless, of course, you're a Klingon. Those bastards keep ruining my upper upper levels. I Don't judge you them. Don't technically but... judge who gets what liquor? Yeah. He makes us sort of one of 50% of one, 100, 50% of the other. Yeah, I suppose that's my job. Part of it, anyways, and he winks. So, you didn't hear this from me, gentlemen, but... Uh... I hear there's a, a thing for the captain. Apparently we're trying to hook him up with someone. Yeah, I think your name came up in the conversation. Oh, God, no. I think Delver mentioned it. Hmm. I mean, do, do you know what the captain likes? Because I don't have an idea. I don't know. I think he could be anything he wants there, right? Yeah, but it's the <laughs> captain. Demo sneezes. I didn't even know you could sneeze. Uh, Pre-programmed cold's about to happen. Pre-programmed cold? I yeah. am gonna I'm gonna need to ask you more about that. Some Subconsciously your body craves different things. Your mind needs certain stimuli. Every now and then I get a cold. Or the fact simile of a cold. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey. Starting. Anyways, yeah, you know, we'll find out. <gasps> Ooh, we could have uh, Arya dig into his past. I think she's intelligence. That's not going to be an abuse of uh, her position and you know abilities, right? You know, let's not ask. Commander Arya anything unbecoming like that because yeah that probably would be bending a rule or two because I got a real thing about I, I mean it, it would be my job as the strategic operations officer to know these things I, I kind of know it for the other captains that are in the area I mean you know what they like I mean, yeah. Uh, take Crawford, for example. He uh, likes women in suits. Hey, that's his thing. I don't question it. Huh. Well, I'm learning more about the captain right now. Oh, he also can't take a headbutt too well. The captain or Crawford? Yes. I just take a <laughs> shot. Like, okay. Uh, it's at this you're, point. You're saying Crawford. Or are you trying to say Crowley? Oh, I meant to say Crowley for all of that. Sorry. <laughs> I was saying Crawford. You're right. <laughs> well, I can obviously tell that I need to make sure I spend a little less time in engineering and really start to get to know more about this little extended family I now have. And takes both shots he asked for and downs them both one right after the other. Captain Crawford, you are up in your uh, ready room, feeling nervous yep. as all hell. It could be the uh, remnants of the concussion, or it could be the fact that you somehow know that people are talking about you. Uh, Lieutenant probably Dur both. Yeah, probably both. Uh, Lieutenant Derval signals that the USS Roosevelt has arrived an hour ahead of schedule. 
Wonderful. Um, Dusk, tell... apologies. Oh, Dusk, okay. your pad uh, chirps slightly to indicate the same message. Well, gentlemen, it seems I needed an ops. Uh, we'll figure out the whole rock tribble thing later. All right. You have a good... And Demos will stop mid and he'll just start having a sneezing fit. Yeah, I don't know whether to laugh at that or... I'm I'm needed. Sorry, gentlemen. And she departs. <laughs> Lieutenant. Uh, okay, back in ops. Where the captain is here. Um, Dolrum, are you going to be around for this? Yes. Okay. Okay, and Keevan, where are you going to be on all this? Are you back on the in ops or down in engineering? I am... I'm going to spend some time up in ops. I've been engineering way too much. Okay. Arya's on shift just because part of this was her brained, hair-brained idea. And where is... Wrong one. There we go. And Demos. Uh, he'd probably be in security just okay. going over reports. All right. As soon as it comes through the transwarp gate, uh, the station is hailed by one Captain Kalos Crawley, captain of the USS Roosevelt. This is the USS Roosevelt. We received your message. Captain Crowley, it's good to see you. It is agreeable to see you. I assume you got the message about the plan we have, uh, the plan we have for the Roosevelt. He'll just raise an eyebrow. I was like, yes. I assume that you're on board with it since you're here. That is correct. Excellent. Uh, we'll send the coordinates to where we're going to your ship, and I guess we'll see what happens. Understood. Is there right. anything else? Um, How's space treating you, Captain? It is agreeable. <sighs> there, Vulcans are so stiff. Does he say that audibly enough so Crowley can hear it? <laughs> he's a Vulcan, he's gonna hear it. <laughs> <laughs> he'll just raise an eyebrow again, he's like, Captain Crowley out. <laughs> we need some fun-loving Vulcans around here. Wouldn't you agree, Captain? Yes, but I'm not sure where we're going to find one. If I may Let's make a ready. suggestion, Captain Commanders, perhaps if we were to bring this marvelous ship through the Transwarp hub, it could be the lure could perhaps cheer up and make Vulcans fun. Uh, well, considering he's going to the uh, carnival ship, it might happen. I don't know about you, Captain, but I kind of want to be on the lunette watching that go down. I'm not sure I do. I'd rather see what's happening with a certain Beta Chef commander. Let's get ready. Commander, Bernie Jail, reporting for duty, sir. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I like you know, to imagine that uh, when Burry Jail walks up the ramp there, Demos comes out, and just as he sneezes, he almost headbutts Burry Jail. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. Oh. <clears throat> Why, yes, hello there, my giant metal friend. And he slaps you hard on the back. He just looks at him for a second like, did you just touch me? Did you just sneeze? Yes. Ah, I is... like you. Just pat him on the shoulder like, come on, let's go. Yes, absolutely. I have received my mission report. I shall report to the USS Aurora immediately and take command. Sure, Dale. <laughs> and he turns on his heel with military precision and struts out of, or struts into the Turbo Bay. 
Have I ever mentioned how much I don't like him, Commander Arya? Uh, this would be number 255, give or take three. Seems what? about right. But sir, why did you make him the beta ship commander? I didn't. Admiral Zier did. Oh. Why he don't might. we like him? Like, sure, he's a little bit of a pompous prat, but, you know. He... That's exactly why I don't like him. He can't be in the same training that all of you had to go through, same as I did, to get into Starfleet. Oh, sorry. I, I, what do I know? I'm just a robot that can sneeze. Well, let, let, let's maybe put it this way. I, I motioned at Captain Crawford. Crawford here is an apple. That man that was just here is a tangerine. Now, yes, they're both circle fruits, but one is shit, and the other is delectable. Adequate. I'm not going to finish that thought. <laughs> the other one's delectable, and I'll, we'll let you figure out who's who. Well, I like both, so... <laughs> Rami materializes, looks like she's about to say something, realizes it's probably best that she not interject, and dematerializes. Oh. <laughs> Rami? Yes, Captain? Were you about to say something? I was about to interject that the amount of times you've uh, dis you've expressed your dislike to Commander Bernie Jail, specifically to Commander Arya, was 242 directly. However, in your quarters and in private, you had you had exclaimed that dislike several hundred more times. You monitoring us in our private quarters? That's literally her job. It is my... She is the manifest of the computer. The quarters should have a privacy setting, though. They do, and several have chosen to enable it. However, it... the captain has chosen to keep an active... Uh, to keep an active feed, or keep active monitoring just in case something happens. Yeah, enable my privacy setting, please. Of course. Privacy mode Thank you. engaged. I just she just puts too. on the sunglasses, just, you know. <laughs> Normal smile. I just engage them during certain times. And on that note, <laughs> on I that needed note. in sick bay. <laughs> We're going to cut to space. <laughs> where a fleet cut of... To black where a fleet of ships is once again approaching the circus ship. Um, I've sort of guessed who's going to be on board which ship with tokens. Let me know if anything needs to be changed. I like how we have ships and then Barry Jail is just floating out in space by himself. <laughs> wow, well, there's... <laughs> well, I've sort of kept all the tokens for who's on which sort of separate. Mm -hmm. oh, I know. I'm just, I'm just having <clears throat> I know. Okay, um, if this is an accurate representation on who's on the various crews. I'd say this is pretty accurate, yeah. All right, yeah. Yep. Cool. Okay, uh, as you approach the circus ship again, it's been roughly a day. Oh, is it dusk or are we already bringing? Uh, well, probably both, actually. Yeah, both would probably be on this one. Uh, it's been about a day, and the ship, or the, the Carna Marvelous, has taken roughly one day's travel at full impulse, so it hasn't moved very far when you had last seen it. It is once again broadcasting the same message, come one, come all, see the greatest sights this universe has ever seen. Uh, this time it hails you, and it is a Ring Mistress Cass. Captain, you have returned. I'm so pleased that you are that you've kept your bar your word. Tell me, are you here to repair our ship? Please. We're here to at least Oh gosh. This is what happens when I'm tired. We're basically here to just transport all the people, right? <laughs> or are we actually going to start repairing it and then do that while it's happening? I can't remember clearly right I now. I believe that you guys were going to try to transfer the sentient life forms while literally beaming Bernie Jail and the no 
most narcissistic engineering team Starfleet has ever seen into the bowels of the ship. Is that accurate? That, right. That yeah. seems fairly accurate. And then possibly tractor the big ship to the rendezvous point. Okay. Oh, this is fun as heck. Okay. Uh, roll, uh, Captain Crawford, can you please roll me a presence plus command test? Yeah. So diplomacy, negotiation, something like that would work. Um, can be assisted by probably D- Dolrum. Um, right. This is going to be a difficulty of three, and I'm going to spend some threat to increase the complication range, um, 18 to 20. Okay. What's um, the roll? Um, presence, presence command. command. Uh, I will... I'm shooting for full 18. Um, I will spend that last momentum for a third die. Okay. Because I have an advisor. Uh. Whenever you assist... An... Well, when I... I guess, no, I have to assist. Whenever you assist another character using your command, that character can assist... Being assist may re-roll. Yeah. So okay. you have a re-roll by me assisting with command. Cool, cool, cool. So, yeah, I'll still roll that three dice because we'll probably need it. Okay. I do have a focus. Would I have a focus? Uh, diplomacy, negotiation, something oh, like that? Yeah. I have composure. So that's, that's about as close as I get. So that's oh, five successes already. So that's already two more momentum. Let's see what uh, Dalrum gets. Did you say composure will work as a focus? Uh, no, it won't. Oh, any? But that's still enough. So three momentum. Do you want to re-roll, Crawford? Nah, I'll, I'll, I'll I already have two crits. I'm not gonna try to fish for a third. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, it takes a significant amount of um, persuasion. There is a deep-seated um, feelings of home and attachment to the mar- the marvelous ship. But eventually Cass um, agrees. Uh, well, Cass will share the conversation with the rest of the crew. Uh, she stri- uh, She says that this is not something that a ring mistress should decide. It is something that the whole troop should agree upon. And it goes radio silent for about a half hour. Um, Commander Bernie Jail, without, you know any prompting whatsoever immediately initiates the mass transport of him plus the four narcissist engineers into the bowels of the ship. Um, Anyone who cares, uh, he does keep a running monologue going over his uh, comm if anyone is interested in listening, but most likely it turns out, it turns into him bossing everyone around and then taking credit for their work. He's a ringleader. Uh, yeah, Demos would listen in. All right. He's listening for any mental state changes. All right. Um, roll me an insight plus medicine test. Uh, difficulty of two. And if you have psychology or anything el- or emotional support, something along those lines. And if anyone else has the patience to listen along with them, they can assist. I'm not I hearing would, any volunteers. I would listen, just because it's going to be... Okay. I have a general care... Is it just Bernie, Jail, or is it also the engineering team? As... It's just Bernie, Jail. The second anyone else tries to uh, add their two cents, he berates them down and tells them to get back to work. Okay, yeah, not listening. I'm just curious mostly because I'm technically ending officer. I Fair. kind of say. Fair enough. Alright, um, insight medicine then, please. Alright, that is... Yeah, you between the two of you, you, you get the two successes you need. Mm. Bernie Jail's monologue while grating, uh, self-centered, egotistical, and all-around um, narcissistic 
uh, doesn't show signs that it's being co-opted by any intelligence. Uh, while admittedly it's difficult to tell with Bernie, uh, he does claim that because he's a Beta Z, he is um, sensitive to such things and would of course report and repulse such active such uh, aggression against him and his team. Uh, while you guys are doing that, um, Captain uh, Croft or Captain Crawley, uh, your non-essential personnel have, were transferred off at the station and have been replaced with some of the freakiest creatures this side of the Gamma Quadrant, um, and that's just the sentient species. Um, of the 25 or so sentients, uh, 20 decide to join or to go over. Uh, Ring leader. A ring mistress Cass is not one of them. Um, there are there are the ones that I had mentioned before. Uh, there's a pair of twins that are uh, that look very similar to like Darth Maul and those that species, with a uh, deep red skin, dark eyes, and swirling black. At first glance, they appear to be uh, natural skin, but it appears actually to be some sort of uh, subdermal tattoos. All the species that come aboard get the uh, Vulcan raised eyebrow. Yep, pretty much, and they are um, they are uncharacteristically well. Even though um, you have no atta no emotional attachment, uh, your ship's counselor, or at least first officer, uh, determines that they are, despite giving them the best hospitality you can, they all seem very lonely. Uh, very morose and sad at being away from their home. Hopefully, it's going to be temporary, and that seems to be what's keeping them going. Um, at this point, if the Roosevelt could please roll me a structure plus security test, please, as it enters into its MVAM mode and begins its tractor beaming. Do I have a ship set for that? Uh, there should be a sh under the ships and stations under the support fleet. There's nothing listed there. We just yep. have the, the slip nears, the runabout, the Apollo, and the S15. Oh, do you not actually have stats for the ships? My sincere apologies. Let me rectify that. Um, all players. All players. You should oh, at least see the Roosevelt. I'll make the rest available after the game. Uh, sorry, what was the roll again? Uh, I believe it is structure plus security. Uh, mm -hmm. Difficulty of... Two. And um, then, oh yeah, um, and have actually just roll me two d twenty where, and then the ship can assist. That's how I'll make it work. Uh, okay. Because I'm not going to bother stacking up every single person that has to roll on the support ships. Five and an eighteen. Five and eighteen. Okay, that's one success then from the uh, crewman doing the piloting. And what does the ship roll? Uh, it doesn't. It's going to be a slog. Uh, the ship seem, or the Carna Marvelous appears to actively be resisting the tractor attempts. Um, you're pulling it, it's just going extremely slowly. Uh, our, um, minutes will turn into hours as uh, Captain Crowley sits with simmering um, Vulcan, whatever the Vulcan equivalent to uh, frustration would be at the lack of progress. Bernie Jail, on the other hand, is doing magnificent work. He is, um, despite his egotistical abilities, his, um, his micromanaging skills are quite top-notch. Under his, um, how shall we say, aggressive leadership style, the engineering team is working really quickly to repair the damage done to the ship. While that's happening, uh, I, I guess I'd enable uh, multi-vector mode and try to do that for a bit we... Alright. Um, activating that, um, do me another roll please, and add a third d20 to the mix for the crew. Alright, so structure, security... Oh, just uh, the three d20? 
Yeah, we're, uh, 3d20 for the crew roll, and then the ship can roll it. Structure security. 13, 7, and a 6. All right, that's two successes right there. Will the third get you momentum? Structure security. Yes. All right, yeah. one more momentum. The Carna Marvelous yes. begins shifting ever so slight, um, faster and faster as the uh, Roosevelt takes her in tow and pulls her all the way forward. I mean, it's still a long way to go before its next destination, but at least she's moving now. Um, Bernie Jail once again... Um, Bernie Jail takes a quick lunch break while not allowing the engineering crew to do the same. That's what you get when you only bring ensigns and try-hard... Uh, um, crewmen to do their jobs. That's what they're good for, after all. <laughs> uh, he outranks me, too. Yes, he does. <clears throat> but, um, it takes overall about a day's worth of work to get the... or to do a full repair on the Faraday cage. Um, as soon as the Faraday cage is repaired and the black orb's energy once again seeps through it and powers up the damaged engineering thing or ah, powers up the damaged engine impulse engine that's takes its power from it uh, several jesters sort of just materialize out of the shadows and begin swarming that area of the ship uh, the jesters go at it literally hammer and tongs beating the deformed metal back into shape uh, passing some tools back and forth with through with acrobatic um, precision, all the while paying no attention at all to the Starfleet presence, um, Bernie Jail takes pictures and remarks that this is what true efficiency looks like, and he will do better to motivate his shift to work like these creatures. Uh, he was with like so it's been about a day. Said, yeah, roughly? it's been it's been roughly a day. Is <laughs> Demos would have checked in on the Roosevelt for the um, passengers, see how they were doing. Uh, the passengers, uh, let's see, it's uh, every four hours or so, um, the ship's doctor does a pass through, and reports that the individuals they they get lonely. Um, at about twelve hours or so, they uh, start they stop. Um, or, sorry, they start refusing food and drink, and they enter a bit of a hunger strike. Uh, they just want to get back to the ship. They're home. <clears throat> uh, there's a, there are a few incidences where individuals on board, both the Roosevelt and the Lunette, attempt to circumnavigate the the protocols that deactivate the transporters, but each knowing what to expect. Um, in this case, uh, Captain Crawley was probably the best captain for this job um, because the captain was able to shut down the attempts each time. Um, the lunette, no, with a commander area and the captain knowing precisely what to expect, you guys picked a, a psychologically sound crew. Also, with orders to pump in um, re, uh, real emotional relax or yeah, what's the word I'm looking for? Not narcotics. The gas that puts people to sleep. Yeah. Anesthesine. Thank you. Um, with with local anesthesine or other anesthesine gas into the ship, should the uh, chief medical officer deem it necessary. All in all, the ship. After a day's worth of work, the uh, Carna Marvelous is once again repaired, and the crew begins to petition Cap uh, Captain Crawley to let them go back. Captain Crowley to the USS Lunette. This is Captain Crawford. Go ahead. The crew of the Carnival ship wish to go back. After extensive examination, they show no signs of regressing. 
Hmm. I think you might have cut off a bit. So you said you're starting no signs of regressed, and then you cut off. So no, no signs of regression. Gotcha. Even if we moved, like, did the Roosevelt move at all the distance that it would probably have had some sort of effect if we, like, it had on us? In terms of the distance moved, or... Not while, not while able to maintain the tractor beam. Gotcha. <clears throat> and this is him speaking to Arya at this point. Well, Commander... I'd say that we moved the Roosevelt further away, but I think we'd be bordering on kidnapping territory. Well, that would be your prerogative as captain. However, if they have not shown signs of uh, any sort of uh, regression at this point, I wonder if the effect just simply hasn't become permanent. And it very well might have. This is your call to make, though, sir. I cannot advise one way or the other at this point. But I would say that we would be entirely remiss in our duty to keep space safe if uh, we let this phenomenon just go about willy-nilly. Hmm. I feel like somehow we have to do some further research into this. Um, Captain Crawford to Captain Crowley. Captain Crowley here. Do you have any reason to think that if we were to move to Roosevelt to a distance where maybe the effect would start to be reversed, that the people on your ship would become rebellious? With the skeleton crew in operation right now, I do not believe I'll be able to secure the ship if they were. I see. Uh. Captain Crowley, prepare to transport the individuals back to the ship. He'll raise an eyebrow. Very well. And he'll look off screen, give a nod, and he'll end communications. Uh, in groups of five, the um, life or, or the uh, circus troop dematerialize from the USS Roosevelt and rematerialize back on board the Carna Marvelous. Uh, Captain, you receive a or Captain Crow, Captain Crawford. Um, yep. The USS Lunette receives a hail from the ship. Put it through. It is uh, Ring Ring Mistress Cass and Commander Bernie Jail. Commander Bernie Jail has his arm around the Ring Mistress. Captain, Cass says, oh, thank you so very much for repairing our ship and seeing it on its way. We would, we would so as much as we would like to give you a full show in appreciation, uh, something tells me that you would not be attending as you might have once. Uh, would I be correct? Uh, very well might be. Why is our commander jail there? I was just saying goodbye, Captain. We've done a hell of a job, and this ring mistress is a hell of a lady. I'm just... Ah, and realizing that his arm is still around her, he immediately withdraws it, snaps at attention, says, Captain Crawford, uh, Commander Bernie Jail, and f four engineers ready to beam back, sir. All right. Prepare to be beam back aboard. Is that the same number of engineers that went over? Yes, the same engineers. Okay. And with that, uh, Commander Bernie Jail's beamed back onto the Aurora where he can't talk to anyone. He can only monologue to himself. Yep. And with that, um, Commander, or Ringmistress Cass once again bows, tips her 
uh, removes her top hat in a s salute. Captain, it has been a pleasure and an honor to have met you and have entertained you as well as we could have. Perhaps we will stop by your Federation and entertain you once again in the future. As now we have, I, we have a schedule to make up for. And with that, I bid you adieu. She, and with that, she cuts her communication, disappears, and your sensors, rem your sensors, um, all register a significant gravimetric distortion forming at the rear end of the Carna Marvelous. The uh, the gravimetric distortion um, intensifies and turns itself into a wormhole. The ship gives a quick reverse boost of its thrusters, vanishes into the wormhole, and the wormhole closes up behind itself. Anyone get scanned of that? Oh, I would have been scanning it at the moment they said they were leaving. <laughs> And that will be a significant amount of logs for you to pour over the next time. Um, to see how the heck they pulled that off. Mm-hmm. Now. Does anybody wish to do anything on return to the station? Uh, uh, I'm good. Yeah. Hey. is going to excuse himself from the bridge and go to his quarters on his ship and nurse his cold. <laughs> Very well. Uh, anybody wish to do anything when they get back to station? No? So... No? Uh, okay. Then we're going to call it here. It's been a f it's been fun. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did. I mean, space clowns. E. Fun. Well, for me anyways. Maybe not for you. But I make <laughs> no apologies. Uh, so, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for playing. I will... See you guys in two weeks' time for Cerberus Station, which will be uh, Friday the 24th at this time. So until next time, guys, goodbye. Have a good night. Bye.